can't see our fight Airbus. Oh, gosh, the Airbus feels very strange. It's an Airbus, it shouldn't let me bank over a certain point anyway. I hate Airbus. <laughs> That's it, I'm done. No more Airbus. Frost climb, climb. Watch me go. I <laughs> love it, love it. I can Airbus. Love it. Well, I don't. <laughs> but it is cool. I like it. I am Airbusing. Oh. <laughs> yes! That is excellent. I'm going to be Airbusing the whole way in. And because it's an Airbus, I could easily enjoy the wing views. I just trust the system. How do you turn down the brightness of the MCP? Isn't it? Oh, 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 don't worry. I am Airbus. Final approach! Yes! I did it! Oh, it's a piece of cake. No, 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 no. Level changed. I want you to do it plain. Don't trust me. And I see two reds, two whites. We are Airbusing today. Oh, come on! <laughs> Love it! I might go around. Oh, it's Airbusing. I've not had to do anything. I'm just gonna go make myself a cup of tea, guys, alright? I'll, I'll leave the tray table out for my tea, alright? This is ridiculous. What a, what a machine. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I like it. I like Airbus. I love Airbus. Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck Sim live stream today. It's the 1st of March 2024, five minutes past five in the evening, but in there, uh, uh, back in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, yeah, we are in the Phoenix A320 uh, version two, block two, with the uh, IAE or International Aero Engine update. And uh, well, that's only one small update they had. They've got now so many extra features, full GSX integration, updated tablet, loads of stuff going on behind the scenes that I would have no clue about how it works and uh, we're today in the home of Airbus to lose this lovely scenery here from Flight Beam Studios and we'll be flying to Heathrow uh, in BMI, British Midland, now defunct of course. Uh, flight to around 1 hour and 25 minutes this is one of the most complete add-on packages now with GSX integration. It's the best simulation I think you can have now from a flight from A to B and I'll show you how it all works later on. But do, don't worry, I'm not an Airbus pilot so, so you will find it very amusing if you're new to the channel and you've not seen uh, me fly this aircraft before, it'll be very amusing. Now you might hear me too, I'm a little bit croaky, I am, or well, I have a cold. Um, it sort of came along on Tuesday, Wednesday, went back to work today in the simulator. So I do apologise for the croakiness of of my voice. Uh, it's only a little cold, like I said I went to work this morning, felt absolutely fine, uh, but I am a little bit nasally and I will be muting the mic occasionally just to blow my nose, so I do apologise if you hear any, uh, un uh, you know, uh, not very nice sounds and things like that. Anyway, we are live on Vatsim, there's a Lufthansa oh. 747 there, there we are in our A320-200 uh, in BMI colours, we've got EasyJet here with the CFMs, we've got another British Airways A320 here. I had a little look on the Vatsim map, it's incredibly busy uh, in Heathrow this evening. No doubt everyone is using this time for the weekend to fly the Phoenix A320. I think by far it's the most popular aircraft on Vatsim now. But here we are in the beautiful BMI regional colours. This aircraft, where did they go defunct? Was it in 2008, 2009? I mean, when I started flying, they, they were no longer uh, operating. But yeah, it's a shame that we don't uh, see them anymore. But uh, we decided to fly them. And they used to have a, a base in Heathrow, I think Manchester, looking online today. But they did have the IEA, uh, let me say this again, the IAE engines. And of course, I'd say it's one hour for Echo to allow that. We've got a whole new sounds uh, with the Phoenix A320 as well. But yeah, it's going to be fun flying from uh, A to B. Uh, anyway, oh, I've just got an error from YouTube. YouTube is not uh, receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such viewers might experience buffering. Uh-oh, if you're experiencing buffering, I can only apologise. Uh, let me just refresh my page to see what's going on. Well, it seems to be all okay. Uh, anyway, who have we got here in chat? Donald and Mosin, I hope you're doing well. Simon C, those are two gorgeous little flower pots under the wings. Brilliant. They do look like that, to be fair. Hope you're doing well, Martin B. Hope you feel better soon. Yeah, I feel absolutely fine. Uh, does the mute button work today? Yes, look, watch. It's working. I've assigned a button on my keyboard to mute Streamlabs instead of using the button on my headset, which is a bit wonky at the moment. So that should help. Um, Alex Batson, I hope you're doing well. Awesome intro. Yes, I take no credit for that. That's... Uh, uh, oh my goodness me. Oh, 
um, I've, my name's gone blank, so who made that? Uh, Dutch guy, he's actually a first officer now uh, for a Dutch airline. Um, oh my god, my name will come back to me, but he's made that video and the previous one as well. Um, uh, who else we got here? Alex Patterson, awesome intro. My very first flight back in 2004 was on BMI, one of their 73 classics, I think, from Edinburgh to Heathrow. Very, very cool. Thanks for subscribing as well, Mustis. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Taylor Roll, yep, that's a new feature they've got. They've got failures too, which is going to be, uh, well, not what we're using today. Yes, of course, I am Perez. Thanks, guys. I'm so rubbish with names sometimes, so they just escape me, but uh, yeah, I was happy that made that there. Uh, Scorcher, where do you get your music for streams? I have an account uh, with Epidemic Sounds, uh, which allows me to play royalty-free music, which you can hear in the background. The intro music was made by the members. Now, we are live, ta uh, live weather. I am six hours behind live time because I wanted to enjoy this spectacular scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This will probably be the most uh, immersive flight we've done with GSX integration, which I'm going to start quite early here uh, because we've got a full load of passengers, a full load of uh, bags to load up in the background as well, and that takes around 20 minutes, so I just want to get that fired up in the background. Uh, I just forgot to open my Airbus A320 checklist as well because I don't fly this plane. I have to follow a checklist uh, to get this uh, aircraft all set up properly. Uh, otherwise, I'll forget steps and I'll make a mess. Uh, 31 members as a member. Thank you very much, James Cooper. He says, afternoon, finally caught you live just back from Birmingham after a good three hours awaiting a friend from the not-so-efficient Lufthansa. Oh dear, hope you're well. Very well, thank you James Cooper. Thanks for your support uh, as a member. I hope you're doing very well and it uh, looks like your friend uh, uh, finally got here. Lufthansa are alright, aren't they? I thought they are pretty reliable. I know they had some ground crew on strike uh, was it a few months back and it did cancel a lot of flights in, was it Munich or, or Frankfurt or something along those lines but uh, uh, yes, uh, I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much indeed. Pankard says, no failures. No, not today. Maybe I'll do an Airbus failure stream, but I do prefer doing it in the 737 because I have a rough idea what I'm doing in that aircraft. Elliot says, top tip, increase passenger density. This will make the passenger load faster as one, or as it won't be one at a time. That is true. I think I might have to look into the GSX settings. It's fine as long as I start it early. So what I'm going to do is just get some electrical power connected to the aircraft. They've got the lovely sounds in the... Uh, add-on and it does they've changed a lot here um, the aircraft handles very differently as well uh, compared to how it handled before I've played around with the settings and the recommended rudder sensitivity and sticks and I'm struggling to land it um, to your amusement so we'll have to see how we get on and go from there uh, jamming yes liveries are in progress by the way yeah I did see that you're making one, which is great because Phoenix made an alpaca Airways one when they released the sim but their their uh, painter who made the original one left the team for whatever reason and they did ask Phoenix did ask if any of the painters had the time to to make one for Alpaca Airways they don't unfortunately so yes we'll have to do that uh, could it SDS enabled yes that is I think um, is it under the settings here um, probably <laughs> I can't remember where it is I did do something along here yes it is enabled there we are SDS so before we do anything I'm going to start GSX and this feature is awesome so I've already synced sim brief you can see the times out because I'm not running live time here um, ground services or sorry mass and balance so because it's synced with sim brief look at that it's already got all the information from my flight plan so 175 passengers uh, 2.6 tons of cargo so that's to do with the uh, checked in bags and fuel 6.4 tons so 6.5 rounded up that'll be minimum block fuel but I don't know if you guys have seen the forecast at Heathrow it's not very nice strong crosswinds approaching 30 knots are forecast with hail and uh, heavy rain forecast until quite late this evening so we're going to take an extra 1200 kilos so all I'm going to do is go here instead of putting 6.3 we'll take 7.5 okay so that's flight plan fuel uh, rounded up for an extra 30 minutes. It burns about the same amount of fuel as the 737. Let's call it 76. Press apply and load aircraft and then press GSX. And what this does, watch this, fully syncs with GSX. Calls for the fueling truck. It starts boarding. It does everything automatically. It's fantastic. There's the air bridge. Uh, the fuel truck arrives quite promptly, I find. Uh, it refuels, connects. You can see the uplift in litres. Uh, the doors open. It's completely automated. I love this little feature. Watch this when the doors open. They wobble slightly. <laughs> I love these little touches that they they put in. I don't know if they're real cargo hold in the A320 waffles, but look, 
Uh, blip, blip, blip. Uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, but there's the fuel truck. It does everything automatically. It starts the boarding process. I did a test sector. Yes, the GSX boarding. Interesting. They seem to be walking on this very narrow metal pole uh, into the uh, aircraft. But yeah, the, the fuel trucks here. Look. It's completely automatic. It will do every four for you. I've not seen this with the PMDG or, well, I think it's only, I've only ever used GSX with the PMDG and the Phoenix. But they have, once again, Phoenix, raised the bar as to integration with, with the uh, GSX. Uh, there you go. Look, he's attaching the fuel hose. You'll see the liters start increasing and it's live. Um, so you'll see here, even in the Phoenix A320, when they start loading fuel, it'll say refueling here, which is a, I guess, an Airbus A320 thing. There you go, look, refueling, 3,040, there it goes, 3,060, 3,080, and you can see outside, look, the hose is attached, catering coming, passengers on board, it, it's just very immersive with regards to all this, but uh, you can see all, ah, the usual GSX suspects are here. He's been on every single Alpaca Airway flight and he wishes to fly beer by that guy with the tattoos. He was very much in a hurry uh, coming on here. I uh, hope you're doing well, Anthony. Good morning to you. Nice to see you here, which is great to see. Uh, Dave, yeah, the Zevo does the same for free. Yes, GSX, I mean, adds the fuel truck and all that sort of stuff. It's great to see that the Zebra mod has that as well, which is really cool. Um, this thing was built with the Simmer in mind, absolutely. Oh, yeah, there we are. That's the current weather in Heathrow. Uh, so, 220 at 16 knots, rain, towering cumulus, lovely. But there, we'll take an extra 30 minutes. Our alternate's Manchester, and we can go from there. Right, what else do I need to do? All I've done is put the battery and ground power on. Uh, we can work our way down here, make sure these are in the off position. The weather radar is off, <coughs> which it is. We'll do the uh, overhead panel scan, so IRS to nav. Remember, I do not fly an Airbus. There's probably a comp correct sequence to do these things. I just press all the white buttons until they extinguish. <laughs> we'll put this to uh, nav logo 2. Emergency exit light is armed. We won't turn the seatbelt side on until boarding's complete. We'll do the fire tests now, so let's do engine 1. There we are. So, fire leave it on the ECAM. It, it is incredible, the textures and detail, and streaming in 2K now, it looks so crisp and clear. There we are. Uh, he's a million miler, Anthony, that guy keep, keeps boarding, it is. Uh, Airbus saved the space of three more letters in the word ref... Yes, why, why have they put that refuel? Uh, there we are. But um, I've done everything I think I need to do on the overhead panel. Or oh, maybe the cargo smoke test, there we are, I've done that as well. As it's the first flight of the day. Oh, I'm moving sun visors, and how do I... Oh no, how do I turn that off? Do I have to cancel that? There we are. Uh, perfect, right. MCP, I'll push the magic B button. There we are, Q&H, 100. Ah! 1009 is set. Um, I could, why are you doing how, how do I? How do I cancel this? I, I should never have done that. Strobes to the auto position, is that an Airbus scene? Yes, looks like strobes aren't on. Perfect. If you leave an auto, how do they illuminate? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, yes, catering's coming on. Next will be the cargo hold after that. Right then, so um, MCP, or whatever this thing's called, is set. I'll have constraints on for later. Jim, you can have constraints. Um, lighting, I'm happy with. Um, let's go into the flight management computer, or M MCDU, I think they call it. There we are. Yeah, it even says it on it, MCDU. So this now has, as before, full sim brief integration, but not only that, you can copy your performance information straight in as well. So where's my little FMS work through for the Airbus? Uh, there we are. So, uh, oh yes, you're meant to go on the ECAM, check your hydraulics, check your electrics. Jim did all that earlier. <coughs> He's just reassured me that everything is hunky-dory in the 320. Uh, right there, so FMS, uh, so MFGC, uh, that's all set correctly. Init page, we've got the latest air rack installed. Uh, I just press init request. Uh, MCDU, FMCCDU. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, there we are. There's our routing. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, the call sign for Midland is Bravo Mike Alpha, and, it, and it's just Midland. But I think the code is Bravo Mike Alpha. Uh, one Alpha Echo. There we are. Cost index. We'll go off the flight plans, cost index. You can see also on the <coughs> mass and balance, look, all the passengers filling in the seats. Very, very cool. Um, cost index from the flight plan is 12. And we're cruising at 34,000 feet, I think it was. Yes, 34,000 feet. Excellent. So that's all in. 
I don't need to press the coordinates on IRS it is automatically doesn't it um, <clears throat> so edit ref page 2 you can copy that in once the loading's complete so I'll do that later just remind me to fill it in if I forget uh, flight plan then now, now there is ATIS let me copy the weather and then we can get our clearance before we load up oh wait there was ATIS oh there was full ATC here there was tower ground approach and ATIS but they've all gone offline oh that's a shame right there's no ATC now unfortunately so uh, we'll just have to get the weather from the METAR so we can copy this from here Phoenix my flights the flight plan there we are so it's 2606 I'm planning to part off 32 right the Laku 6 Bravo it's Cav OK 13 degrees QH is 1009 oh apparently there is even a D8 is why why can't I see that on that sim I don't know <laughs> bonjour this is Toulouse information chart expect ILS 32 left departing off 32 right Sid 6 Bravo there is PDC available transition level 60 Cav OK 13 degrees Firm information, Charlie. Uh, there we are. Uh, did you know you can use MCD on your external device? I did know that, Domino Mocina. I prefer to just use it on the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, there we are. Look, all the passengers still boarding. Very, very cool. Right, so <clears throat> no ATC now, so I'm going to press departure 3 2 right, and the SID will be a LACU 6 Bravo. Insert, and then all the way to Heathrow. Heathrow arrivals. 27 right. I always forget Heathrow. I think when they're Wesley, they're 27 right. It will be the Roxog 1 Hotel. And uh, be via Ockham. Insert. So that should have the full arrival on if I go to plan. Including the transition if we don't get vectors go. Excellent. No discontinuities. Looking good. Uh, so that's all uploaded. FMC's done. Uh, laterally. Uh, you know what? I can even put my beloved fix ring in now before I get. Uh, Echo <laughs> Golf Lima Lima. Runway 27. Did I say right or left? It'll be l right, won't it? Ah! What do I do? W two seven right. What what? I thought I did that. Oh, the landing two seven left. Is that is that why it's not accepting it? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I even. S oh no. I I think it. I think. I, oh no. Is it just two seven left? <laughs> yes. Don't put R W. This is ever. It's a Boeing thing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Right. That's done. And if you say sorry, they're landing on two seven left now. Uh, what did I put? I put 27 right. Is it? I thought I'd checked. Just 27 right. Uh, I, I can change it later, but are they landing on 27 left now? I thought they landed on right. Oh, I, I just checked flight radar before the stream and I, I thought I saw a lot of airplanes landing on, on 27 right. In fact, I'm going to check it now. Oh, you're right. They are landing on 27 left. Ah, 3pm 3, 3 they switch. Ah, oh, he throw things. Right, I'll change that now then. Uh, so, flight plan. Do I have to go all the way to Heathrow? Is that the only way of changing it? Arrival. ILS 27 left. <coughs> and it's still going to be via Ocom, isn't it? All right, look, Airbusing's no problem for me these days. <laughs> right, that's done. I think they've just started loading the bags. There we are. So as soon as the bags are loaded, I don't know if the performance is... Is that based off actual load? So if I go to departure performance, sync load sheet. Oh no, that is final, preliminary. So 68.1 and takeoff weight 29.8. Sync live weather as well. So we can actually do the performance and then we can do the... Or do I need to do the init ref first? But I think the init ref for mass and balance. If I press send to MCDU, so if I go to init page 2, is that... Yeah, that's my actual now. My final zero fuel weight will be 63.2. So you can see that's constantly changing. So I could put my, my final figure in now. So uh, I'll just get that from the flight plan because it won't change. Uh, let me just scroll up here. It'll be the same zero fuel weight as this. Straight from Simbrief. 
Uh, 60.7. So I can put 60.7. Ah. And then, will that be my final 0 for your CG? Oh, you do need to... Okay, I'll wait for it to finish. Well, whilst it's doing that, we still need the IRS to align. We could talk a little bit about the taxi and SID routing. So, I'm sure most of you have seen the Pro Airbus streamers. Um... You've got full Navigraph integration, but what I love now is, look at this, they've got the Navigraph charts, which are so much better than Jeppesen charts. Look at this, you can zoom right in, you can see all the taxiway markings, all the hole points, as you would do on Navigraph. So, it's wonderful. Previously, you obviously had the charts, so you could select this chart and taxi using this, but that, that is rubbish to taxi off, and that's why I just don't like Jepson charts. There's no taxi line markings, you can't see the whole points clearly, you've got the stand charts, but um, you can actually use the default Navigraph chart, so I can close that, uh, like so, and, and use that to taxi, which is pretty good. Just going to blow my nose, guys, excuse me. Perfect. I'm glad I've got that new uh, mute feature. Um, so there we are. Uh, so that's going to be the taxi pushback. Um, it'll be facing east. And then we'll go out one of these taxiways onto the parallel. And then we'll take full length for runway 32 right via November 1. So that's going to be our taxi routing. Our SID is going to be the LACU 6 Bravo. So it's NADP 1 departure, according to my company's uh, operating guidance. So the elevation here. It's um, 499 feet. So, question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Mr. Um If it's NADP1, when do we accelerate to the clean speed if the elevation is 499 feet? Let's see if anyone here in chat knows the answer. So, it's climb straight ahead, Bravo out, Oscar 320, slight right turn to Bravo Oscar 322, which is coded, then to LACU. And it's to climb to flight level 70. So, we can set that on the uh, fake MCP. There we are. Um, perfect 99, no. Free scratch, no. LE34S, correct. 3,500, if you were to be very correct, 3,499. But 3,500 is correct. You maintain V2 to V2 plus 20 until that height, and then we can accelerate at 3,500, which we can insert into the FMC shortly. There we are. How's uh, Jean-Claude and, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> what are the... Per Toulousean name could we think of her doing? He actually looks quite French. Oh, he's on his way. Yeah, definitely French. Oh, he's uh, it's very cool, isn't it? He's got his boots on. He's lowering the, uh, the baggage loader. I think it closes the doors as well. Look at my my international aero engine engines. And it looks like Jean-Claude is loading the... La Francois, that's it. Francois Jean-Claude are oh, loading the last of the suitcases. What is he packed? That's a huge suitcase. Oh, yes. You be careful. Very smartly dressed. <laughs> he is sort of chucking them onto the belt. Uh, look at the engines. Very pointy. Do they still manufacture these engines? International uh, aero engine, i.e. I don't know. There we are. Last bag's on. That should be all good for Francois Jean-Claude. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, sorry, divers. FCU, please, not MCP. Uh, okay. The FCU. MCP. I will say MCP multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. I think that ding is GSX telling me boarding is complete. There we are. Fully integrated, so aircraft is loaded. So, let's go to departure performance. Uh, no, before we do that, actually, Phoenix. And if I go to initref uh, here, page 2, you can see here, if I press the uh, send to MCDU, 60.7 and 31. Look, it's copied that across, which is great. Um, let's look at the takeoff performance so if I go now to departure performance it's dry 3 2 right for departure we'll use the OPT optimum flap setting force toga no anti-ice off packs on 68.1 is our gross weight takeoff CG is 29.8 sync low G final uh, sync weather as well and we can select intersection manually now if you so wish we'll use full length uh, press calculate so this is giving us the speeds these are the flap retraction and slap retraction speeds. Uh, flap 2, dun 0.158 degrees. And we can simply press send to MCDU now. And look at that, it's copied it all in. Even less work to do in the Airbus A320. Um, the only thing 
is because we're flying an ADP-1 acceleration height, I will change now to uh, 3499 as it's NADP-1. So it'll do its Airbus thing and accelerate automatically. There we go. So performance is done. I've calculated all this. We'll imagine we've done dispatch landing performance. We briefed the taxi. We briefed the SID. And I think I've, I've all Airbus as a pro. Uh, I don't think there's a huge amount more left to do apart from start the APU and get it on the bus, disconnect the ground power and uh, get on our way to London Heathrow. Um, Aaron says, I believe you'll find it's pronounced Mukdu. Is that a V1? V1 simulation saying, brilliant. Uh, Sleepy Lab just joining, have we done the fuel load calculations? Yes, we've taken an extra 30 minutes due to the inclement weather forecast at London Heathrow. Also for the fact I had a little look on the Vatsim map at London Heathrow and it's absolutely full of Speedbird A320s as, you, as you'd expect. Yeah, look at, have a look on the Vatsim map, it's absolutely massively busy. <laughs> oh, there's everyone in uh, A320 and Terminal 5. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll have to see. There's no events going on at Heathrow, but they do have ground tower and approach on, but no centre controller. I do feel for that poor approach controller. It's going to be really, really busy. Uh, expect hold holding at Lambourne, yes. Well, that extra 30 minutes of fuel we took will be very useful. Have you guys heard how this sounds on takeoff and engine start? The bass is wonderful. My call sign, I've got to remember the new call sign today, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Uh, driver, would be good to see a 7.3 at the same level? Yes, uh, the uh, PMDG is fantastic, best 737 in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the only. Uh, but it is lacking behind with regards to all of the... I think they're a little bit stuck in their old, old ways, let's say. Uh, both aircraft and team but I why bugs moved with the V speeds or something I think that's what they were probably originally set for but I'll just I'll just leave them there um Don and Mo seen a stream down for me anyone else uh all good here oh and Astrojo you're having freezing issues as well yeah all a okay my side doesn't seem to be any issues here sorry if you've got any buffering guys uh, seems to be uh, fine. Right so um I can GSX my way out of here now so I can request Prepare for pushback and departure. I think Jean Claude will spawn there. There we are. There goes the airbridge. And uh, oh, there he is. Oh, there. Oh, sorry, Madame. Madame Moselle. Hello, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Right. Uh, look at that full load. One thing I noticed with the 320 is you can't take, if you've got a full load of passengers at the cargo hold for, you can't take a huge amount of extra fuel. I only took 1,200 kilos extra, because if you look at the flight plan, look at our estimated landing weight with standard fuel, 63.2 tonnes. Mercy. I'm taking an extra 1,200 kilos. That's put me right at my maximum landing weight. So, when you've got a full 320 with bags in the hold, it doesn't leave a huge amount of extra fuel, uh, the availability to take an extra fuel, I couldn't take any more because I'm going to be landing at Heathrow at my max landing weight and I've only taken an extra 30 minutes. You know, in the 7.3 you usually got enough to take at least an hour and 32 hours extra if you wish to, even when it's full. Um, Mark Taylor, switching on the beacon will automatically initiate pushback. That's not realistic at all though. The beacon light, you never ever turn on until you've got clearance. In fact, if you turn on the beacon light before initiating pushback, that's a, that's a huge no-no in the, in the industry. So maybe they should change that. Um, I mean, I know within the realms of a simulation, but yeah, the beacon light is to be respected uh, in reality. Right, I, I best do some Airbus uh, stuff, hadn't I, here? Uh, so did I remove... No, I need to remove the chocks. Things like that. So uh, isn't that Phoenix? Ground services, GPU chocks. Oh no, did I forget to... Oh no! Uh, have I... Have I, I think I accidentally forgot... Ah, uh, yeah, I meant to push that external power button, but I think... Uh, I think it saved it myself. Oh dear. Um, oh really, David, it cannot do full passengers and fuel. Fabi, that's why the 7.3 is so much better for flights of Canaries, for example. That's interesting. So, so guys flying fully loaded 320s, they don't have a huge amount of extra capacity for for loads of fuel, so when there's widespread disruption, you know, I'm tanking, 
I'm taking an extra, like, you know, four, I'm going full wings uh, on short sectors as well. Uh, very interesting. Right, um, again, I'm just checking if there's any ATC. No ATC, unfortunately. So, before clearance, uh, AP bleed can come on. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll get the beacon on as well. Uh, ATC transponder. Oh! Oh, GSX have upset. Ah! What's it doing? I think I've I've triggered it all, haven't I? Because I've turned the anti. Uh oh, I've upset GSX. Uh... So I want tail to the nose to the right. Uh, stand by. Parking brake off uh, is next. I've done the rest. Uh, bleeds on. Excellent. And I'll move that switch to uh, ignition start. Uh, Yes, I am, madam. Hold on. There we are. Parking brake released. Oh, there's a massive... Oh, lovely. Of course. Ah, I didn't even look. <laughs> Where's he going with his jumbo? Oh. <laughs> ah, I didn't I didn't see that. I'm very sorry, 747. Let's see where the pushback... Oh, that's been perfectly ended. And now going... For oh, being dragged forward as well. PA, plane, did you not hear my PA? It's fantastic. Get your Boeing out of here, mister. <laughs> and put your speed brakes away. Right, how am I doing? Have I forgotten anything major? I think we're all good. Right, it's doing bleed stuff automatically with the ignition start on. I'll crank it. Oh, I better be on Unicom, actually. Let me just put Unicom active. There we are. Uh, turn that up slightly. There we go. Hopefully we'll get some heat. Well, we definitely get ATC and heat ray. Right, I just moved this to tune uh, to it on, don't I? There we are. Uh, uh oh. Engine start lever, fault thrust lever. Oh, crikey. There we are. I, oh, yes, I'm now using my Boeing thrust levers for the Airbus one because my joystick was broken. What? Why have you dumped me here? Why have you put me here for? I said push back tail. Oh. It didn't do that in the test sector. Well, mercy, madame, but you've dumped me really in a random place. Oh, well, we'll just enjoy the sounds. Oh, well, no, he started two first. Somebody call V1. Oh, dear, is this... Ah. Oh, package 386 ah. I love these sounds when it starts spooling up. Oh, can you hear that? Our 320 pilot does two first. Well, oh. uh, uh, operator SOPs. We've got three forties, seven fours. All the big boys are here. Right, that says available. Starting engine number one. It's just nothing to do in here. I'm sure you're meant to be monitoring N2. Oh yes, it has EPR here. Ugh. N2. There's oil pressure. I don't know the sequence at what point do you need to have oil pressure, at what point do you do an aborted engine start? I mean it probably does it all automatically. From the pouch and put it over your head. Pass the tapes around your waist. Matthew, you don't have to monitor the start at all. That's ridiculous. So I guess yeah, the EC or equivalent will just cut the fuel off if needed. Here in the 73 having to monitor it close closely. I mean I've never had to do an aborted engine start how many years? Twelve years. But yeah, if you need, if you have a wet start, hot start, hung start, you need to cut it off. How's performance so far? V2, fantastic. Even with any builds, he throw. Your tray table must now be stowed, armrests down, window blinds open, and seatbelt fastened. Further information regarding safety on board can be found in the in-flight magazine. We hope. Ah. Au revoir, madame. Thanks for showing me the pin. And lots of big clunking sounds. That's very airbussy. Sounds good. Right, two good starts then. Thrust leave is idle. Uh, move this to the... Uh, oops. Oh, normal position. Don't go to crank. I've not broken anything here. Uh, AP bleed off. APU 
off. <coughs> Engine wing anti ice not required. Ground spoilers are um, flaps to two. Flight controls. Now, I was looking online. Some airlines do the flight control check stationary, so I'm going to do that now. But you can disconnect the rudder. I'll check the flight controls. I love how it brings up the flight control display automatically. So I've not disconnected the rudder to the nose wheel steering, but that is now checked. Uh, pitch is set to zero, rudder uh, is reset to zero, and after start checklist is complete. There we are. Uh, next is taxi, so we'll turn on the taxi light and turn off light. And we'll bring up the charts here. Where, where are we? Over here. Uh, Toulouse traffic, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, taxiing to runway 3 to right uh, via Tango Papa. Excellent. So, oh, well, we'll just have to watch the uh, flutters sort of back left and right. So, I'm just going to do a right turn and we'll take this exit here. Just keep an eye out on the Lufthansa. So, parking brakes released. It's already moving forward, so I'm just going to put a little bit of thrust on engine number one, leave idle on engine number two, because I'm going to crank the till around. Seatbelt signs, whoops. What is Larry Lufthansa doing? What we'll do, we'll do a 180, come out here. Actually, yes, what is these? What is this CTAF frequency? I've, I've heard about this on Vatsim, but I've not looked into it. I don't even know what it is. So there we are, thrust up on engine number two now. And yeah, this is Toulouse frequency. How smooth is it looking for you guys? I've got the FPS nailed, no stuttering. This is uh, 2K settings, everything on high end on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Ultra, I get. I don't really see the increase in performance uh, or the quality. Ah! I wasn't looking where I was going. There we are. Just nearly had a uh, ground collision. All good. Nice airline, sir. I, I'd do anything to fly for Alpaca Airways. Instead, I'm with oh, British Midland. Welcome. Taxi's really nicely as well. Welcome aboard, Alphaz uh, Nexus. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the subscription. So let's do the taxi checklist. Flight controls have been checked. Order brake to max. Arm the speed brake. Uh, cabin check. We'll tell them we're ready. Is it just one of these buttons? And I notice now you, you can actually press this here and it'll say attend. Uh, and then we'll do takeoff config checked. Sleepy Lab, thank you very much for your continued support as a member. Only four years. <laughs> thank you so much, buddy, for the continued support. Really appreciate it, buddy. Hope you're keeping very well. Yeah, so the rudder feels really different now than before. It's less jerky, it's a lot smoother. It's nice. So I think that's the cabin. So if I press this. The cabin is now secure for takeoff. And you can actually hear the volume, which is great. So how do you clear that button? Because usually when you pick up the service interphone and then they put it down, it clears it. Uh, and then I can press the takeoff config. There we are. Check's complete. Welcome. Click reset. Thank you very much. We just need a flyby camera in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Squawk 2000. Oh yeah, we're we're going VFR, aren't we? Just make sure I'm not 26 knots as well, that's fine. There we go. Oops. There we are. Uh, predictive which you're off. Yes, I'll do that lining up. That's what we do the weather radar on predictive which you're well, it's all on the weather radar for us. Excellent, there's an alpaca lining up ahead. Brakes 
good. Hatchin, hat taxi fast? No, 30 knots maximum, no problem. We only got to what, 25, 26? All good in the hood. Right, we'll just wait for that alpaca to start rolling before we line up. Should be doing maximum 10 knots though for this turn. He's in his IAE. We'll just hold short here. So I do want to just make sure everything is all set correctly at the whole point. Oh, brakes are all on, I think. Right, parking brakes set. So, lining up. Lights are on. Strobes are on. Weather radar. We can turn on down here. And the predicted wind shear warning. And I'll put that to auto. TARA. So anything I've forgotten? MCP set, transponder TARA, strobe lights on, lights on. Checks complete. That's my operator's one. Uh, right. To lose traffic. Uh, Midland 1 Alpha Echo lining up. Runway 3 to right. Perfect. Tray table stowed. <laughs> Welcome. I think we've got everything here. Welcome aboard Mike West. Thanks for the subscription. Good. 1.05 is that the initial EPR when you stand them up? I was looking at the M1. <laughs> N1, I understand. It was EPR, EPR nonsense. Well, if it was on VATSIM, it's a sure way to get a supervisor calling if you abuse another member. Yeah, don't ever do that. I hope you've not done such a thing. It's 1.05 EPR, thank you. Right then, all I've got left to do is start the timer. Just make sure there's sufficient separation. The aircraft is now 2,000 feet, the one that just took off. Welcome. Perfect, lined up then in the Phoenix A320. I'm sure you've all heard it before, but enjoy the departure of the sounds. Perfect, we'll say we're taking off now. Man flex, yeah, so this time I'll make sure I've moved the thrust levers to the man, no, the, the flex mucked position. Right, so Togo's in chat then. Let's go to London Heathrow. Run. Uh, to lose traffic, Midland 1 Alpha Echo taking off runway 3, 2, right. Excellent. So, 1. Point, what was it? 1.05. Okay, that looks all stabilised. And, uh. Oh, I'm off! Flex Blue SRS Runway Green Climb Nav Blue Off we go It's very quick spawning up aren't they Airspeed's alive Oh yeah I should put some light full of pressure Brr <laughs> Great sounds 100 knots A little bit of a crossing from the left A little bit of rudder oh, It's definitely better on the rudder isn't it V1 rotates. Once we climb, gears up. And I don't need to trim. Look at this. This is fantastic, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> oh. Bye bye, Airbus. Factory. Oops. Follow the flight directors. I look. I just move it onto the flight director. Then that's it. I don't need to do anything else. So then a DP one. Remember, so the aircraft will accelerate at three thousand five hundred feet. Oh, lever to climb. There we are. I've detented and uh, command. Ah. <laughs> uh. That's it. So when do I pr when can I go up to the slats? Is that when it starts accelerating? Or flaps to what? So set standard. That's 3500 feet HL. There we are. Now I can go flaps to position one. Oh, so I'm already above the F. So there's one. That'd be 
piece of piece of cake. Disarm spoilers, Roger Reese, thank you. That one I remember. There's the S. Right down to 11. Feet on the table and relax. Uh, you can't see me because I don't have yoke cam on. My feet are currently on my, my desk just for ultimate realism. <laughs> right. There's no ATC. I'm going to go straight to my cruise level. 340 and I it, there's no restriction it just follows that doesn't it there's no like VNAV out hold there we are flaps up gears up passing 53 flight level 340 let's do the after takeoff checklist so speed brake I've put away I'll, I'll retract the landing lights maybe that's a 10,000 I don't know uh, checks complete <laughs> Micah says, oh, okay, I'm out for dinner this evening. Enjoy the flight stream. Thank you very much for popping in, buddy. Scotty2 says, I think there is a big d uh, going from flex to climb in that. You don't hear the engines decrease, but you do with Toga, and you did in B1. Yes, I remember going to climb that the climb thrust was a bit of a, a slowdown. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, V1 simulations. <laughs> what do you have to say? Now, for the application to switch to 320, life and comfort. On that tray table, and you're all set. <laughs> what do you do? You, do you rest? Do you rest your chin on this, <laughs> or your legs? Brilliant. Thank you very much. V1 simulations for your five dollar donation. And ping up any second. Let me do well. Hey, I'm an Airbus Pro. I'm the I'm the second best Airbus streamer on YouTube. <laughs> I put you first. <laughs> Makes it pop in, buddy. What's it? Good afternoon, it's about to probably be morning for V1. Norco, when flying on of approach in the 73, do I need the GLS VOR frequency? Also, do I on the approach or Vorlock button? I still don't understand. Yeah, Norco, so it depends on the aircraft operator. We don't have Ian approach, integrated approach navigation, so we at my operator have to use uh, VNAV path and Vorlock if it's localizer, or if it's RNAV, you'd use LNAV and VNAV. Uh, if you've got integrate, integrated approach navigation, you can arm approach and it behaves like a, an ILS. Which is what this 320 does as well. Right, I need to put the tray table away, it's uh, bothering me. Right, uh, passing 105, flight level 340, let's do the uh, pre-cruise checks. Fuel, uh, we've got plenty, 69 <laughs> on arrival, 3.6 loads. 20. Thanks again, V1. Yeah. Appreciate your, your generosity, sir. Thank you. Nobody. Now fill out your application to switch to the A320, Life of Comfort, on that tray table and you're all set, winking face. Brilliant. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. And I hope you're doing well over US stateside. Thank you. Taylor says, hey, V1. Uh, he's in here as well. V1 simply says, he started two first. I'm out. Hey, listen, I've been told we have conflicting reports here. I've been told to start engine number two. I've been told to start engine number one. I've been told it doesn't matter. Uh, best, uh, best uh, start number one first when I'm next to this aircraft. <laughs> Hope you're doing money. Streaming as well in 10 minutes. Perfect. I'd recommend checking out his content for a more professional Airbus guidance. This is more for amusement. Ah, XP72 is here as well. Another excellent live streamer. I'd highly recommend going to uh, see that. Uh, he says... Uh, 27 months as a member as well. Thanks, buddy. You, you don't need to be a, a member at all, because uh, I know you've got your own channel as well, but I appreciate the support nonetheless. Uh, he says, V1 and Fly Deck to Sim shared cockpit for the win. Yeah, but now I've been talking to V1 very briefly about every sort of 12 to 18 months we sort of speak to each other and we talked about this. In fact, I need to get back to V1 because I asked some questions about the Fly Live overlay. He emailed back and I never got round to replying because I've tried some fixes and it doesn't work for me. So that's why in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I am fly live overlay -less because it's just not working for me uh, and I don't want to use FSUI PC anymore because it could have been causing a conflict with my previous build and since I did a clean install of Microsoft Flight Sim 
I've not had any issues. Anyway, I digress. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, support as a member XP72. Hope you're doing well. I do certainly recommend going to check his content out as well. If he wants there's no love, I know, I'm sorry. I am incredibly busy. Um, I've been... I had some time off recently, V1, but I'm doing the LTC course at my operator at the moment to become a training captain. I still can't quite believe it myself. Uh, and uh, that's me busy for the next, uh, well, until the middle of April. So I've got my sim training coming up and then my line training for training captain coming up as well. Then I have a bit more free time available. <coughs> uh, welcome aboard there, Mus, Mus Nymone. I hope you're doing well, thanks for the uh, subscription. Got to just have a uh, Zoom audio chat with him for the bands. Maybe shared cockpit in the 2024. I think having a shared cockpit, he takes me for a spin in the 320. I take him for a spin in the uh, the NG, or vice versa. I think it's more amusing when we fly each other's type of aircraft. Certainly for you guys watching it. Uh, first set simulation says the correct call out per V1 is the Man Flex SRS runway auto throttle is blue. That's what I said, wasn't it? I said it almost perfectly. Oh, is that incorrect? Oh, is that... Ah, I, I, I get you through our simulations. That's what I said. Might not be correct. Hey, I'm just reading my FMAs. That's important. <laughs> Anthony says, excuse 737 from the novel. 737 excuse is brilliant. Uh, Felix, yeah, you need to check out the QRH. I've, I had a little flick for it on my test sector. And you got all these... Oh, I mean, I'm, pl I'm playing with fire here. Goodness me. Yes, not playing with those ones. What's a little minor issue that I can have? Which isn't going to cause lots of problems. I, I might play. Uh, yes, is it under Phoenix and then under one of these? Oh no, it's under Pilot Brief Documents. Yeah, there's a full, a full QRH here. Now, I thought it was all in the ECAM. I didn't realise there was a QRH, a paper QRH. Oh, is that ditching? I just saw bracer impact. No, engine dual failure, fuel remaining. Lovely. We have we call it loss of thrust on both engines in the 73. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, normal procedures. Ah. Oh, so they've literally got normal procedures and checklists in here as well. That's really good. Have I forgotten anything? The answer is no. Tray table in op. <laughs> yeah, is there actually tray table jammed? Uh, QRH, uh, Q QRH table, tray table fire, not double checklist. QRH tray table severe damage. <laughs> QRH tray table will not retract. Uh, that's the only checklist in there, brilliant. Uh, 3 to one Sean said, uh, FS Dream Team has a very attractive sale of their sceneries on Microsoft Flights and Marketplace. Almost 50%, very nice. Good discount there. Uh, Donald Mosina, thank you very much. 47 months as a member and a very active moderator and member on the channel. He says, today is exactly the 47th anniversary of me joining the Flight Dixon channel. And he flies Airbus on this occasion. Uh, loved every single day of being a member. <laughs> thank you very much, buddy, for, for being a member on this channel for such a this significant period of time. 47 months. So that's uh, how many years? Nearly four years. Crazy. Thank you very much, buddy. Runaway tray table. <laughs> tray table fire. Oh, dear. Love all the banter here. Take care, Jamlin. Enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your weekend as well. Right, passing 23,000 feet. Flight level 230 up to 340. There's a lot of traffic here on VATSIM. You can see the contrails. Got a couple of aircraft. Everything is running very smoothly in the simulator today. Cheers, Jamlin. 48 months. Uh, looks like I beat Domino Mesina by one month. You just had to do that, didn't you? <laughs> Cheers, Jamlin. Just had to come in here and top trump Domino Mesina by the extra months. Thanks, Jamlin. Almost four years as a member. And for your uh, all your liveries you've, you've made for the channel and for all the members too. Thanks, buddy. Excuse me. 
Hi, my name is. Hello, Captain. What's the worst weather you've encountered in real life? Um, I've had... I've had wind shear. Not full-blown wind shear warning, but wind shear, which didn't trigger it. That was not fun. Um, I did do the wind shear escape manoeuvre. Uh, and I did go full power initially. The aircraft didn't climb for about three seconds. That was a bit scary, but strong wind shear can do that. Um, and um, I, I've not had a lightning strike. Um, I've had to divert three, two occasions, three occasions for thunderstorms. No, I've done three weather diversions: one for fog, two for thunderstorms. Uh, and uh, and we're lucky in Europe; we don't get the monsters that they get in the US and Asia. You know, with the, these CBs up at forty-five, fifty thousand feet. But yeah, I, I don't like thunderstorms, and I don't like um, snow. <laughs> so yeah, they're the, the things I avoid. Uh, oh. <laughs> 47 months, 48 months. Oh, it's top trumped everyone. 49 months. <laughs> that's nothing. 48 months, he says, that's nothing. Thanks to the 49 months to member Owen. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you very much. Who's here? Uh, oh, Abby. 39 months, still incredible. Thanks, buddy. Says, I wish I'd been introduced to aviation much earlier in life. Best community I've been a part of. Thank you very much, Abby. I really appreciate your, your support as a member and. Uh, Thank you, I hope you're doing well. 39 bumps. Cheers. Thank you indeed. Uh, Alex says, any severe turbulence I have in 13 years, it'll well, be 13 years this year, never experienced severe turbulence. Uh, I've had very moderate turbulence, but to reassure you, I've never been scared of turbulence. And what you think is severe turbulence, the aircraft can probably take twice as worse before anything. <laughs> All coming in now. All the members top trumping, trying to top trump for each other. Aaron, that's still very impressive. 44 bumps, July 2020. That was the middle of COVID. He said hi to the pandemic. Hard to believe it. Thanks for the education entertainment through some difficult times. You're most welcome, Aaron. Hope you're doing all over. Uh, you're over in Ireland, aren't you, Aaron? I forget who's who and where's what, but I uh, hope you're doing well. Thank you very much, uh, buddy. Uh, two tons, 49 bumps as member as well, adding to my tally to the ongoing member stat poker. <laughs> that's a good hand, two tons. Thank you very much for the support for that entire time and for being very active amongst the members too. Thanks, buddy. Driver, what would you do if you kick the rudder now? Would a bus deny your request? Now, I tried this on a test sector. So, unlike the 737, the A320, if you put rudder input in, will trip the autopilot. So watch this, if I put rudder, it'll trip the autopilot. So I noticed that on the test sector. Now, in the 737, you can put rudder in and it won't trip the autopilot unless you saturate the autopilot. So the rudder on a failed passive 737 has no input from the automation. It's only on the aileron and pitch. Um, no input on the rudder. So so that's something I've noticed that's different from the 320. On the 73, it won't do that. The aileron, it'll try and compensate by rolling the plane. Oh my goodness me. Uh, Andrew Bjorn, 37 months of member. Thank you very much for your continued support. I hope you're having a great uh, evening, afternoon, morning and weekend coming up as well. Mark, 2510, who's been a member for 30 months as well. Thank you very much as well for your continued support. Domino Bosina, what have I started? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone's picking in here. Hi, Miss Man... May Moni. Greetings, Captain. I actually have watched a couple of videos of yours in the past. I'll try on the 7.3, but uh, I'm a diehard uh, A320 fan. Oh, well, we, we can uh, we can maybe uh, sort that out, you know, at some point. <laughs> uh, but uh, nice to watch you fly the new Phoenix and have a V1 around as well. Absolutely. Look, there's a lot of 320 fans here. It's a great aeroplane, but it's, it's not a pilot's plane. <laughs> get yourself some Zebo, get yourself some PMTG, do some proper hand flowed approaches. It's, it's, it's more fun. <laughs> oh, blasting at the 340. No ATC still. We're approaching waypoint Shala. Oh, this sounds very familiar. Shala, Cognac, Manak, Tirav. I've flown this airway at many a, many a morning and afternoon and evening.
boss amino, uh, you'll give the Zebo another chance. That's what I like to hear. Very good. Alex Patterson, I hope you're doing well. Bit of a weird question, but what do you plan as your engine out procedure if there are no published, none published, and there is terrain in the vicinity? Follow the SID. Fantastic question there, Alex Patterson. So at my operator, every single departure of every single runway has an engine out SID. Um, it's either climb straight ahead to a predefined point to enter a hold, um, or then you can request vectors or anything like that. Or we have at my operator what we call special engine out SIDs, where it's routing to take you away from the terrain. Now, depending on where the engine failed, you either stay on the SID, uh, or it's perhaps best to get off the SID. Remember, a standard instrument departure does not guarantee terrain clearance in the event of an engine failure. So you have to be very aware of that. So if I had an engine failure during the climb out, and uh, you know it was quite low down, I'd be inclined to follow the, the engine out SID. Thirty-five aircraft on the ground at Heathrow, crazy. MGS One, are you satisfied with the current X-Plane Twelve state? They need to fix cockpit lighting. It is, it is very. <sighs> I wouldn't use the word unusable, but I just check out our last X-Plane stream in the in the mod. I mean, we had to turn off. We had to go to night. We were flying it in the middle of the day, and it was so dark. I couldn't actually see the screens properly. I had to go. Had to go um, to, to night time, which ironically is, is the best time when uh, to have the best cockpit lighting. That needs to be fixed, and I know that their new update is looking into it, but I don't minimums, think it's going to be an instant fix. Christoph65, thank you very much for joining as a member. Glad you're doing well, and I hope you're doing well. Thanks for, for joining as a member. Enjoy the custom emojis and chat, enjoy the members only Discord. Thank you very much. Excellent. Glad you understood, Alex. Driver, have you taken a look at how well modelled the control laws are? You're asking the complete wrong question to the wrong streamer. I'd recommend to go chatting to V1 Simulations. I've heard of Airbus alternate law and things like that, but I couldn't tell you if it's well modelled. I am led to believe, speaking to Airbus pilots who stream this aircraft and uh, from people who have flown this aircraft who commented chats that this aircraft is... It's very well modelled within the confines of a desktop simulator. Yeah, I heard Michelangelo. Yeah, the next update isn't going to fix cockpit lighting. Ugh. I tried the R is it RXP mod. I just it seemed to have mixed results. Anyway, there's 340. Uh, we've just passed, or well, just approaching Shallot. We'll just do a little fuel check there. Uh, just the integration with Navigraph and GSX now it makes this a really just turn off GSX actually really nice add on. So Shallot should be there after 19 minutes, airborne for 20. It's a little bit behind schedule, but only by a minute. Uh, fuel on board Shallot should be 4.6 tons. We've got 5.9, we took an extra 1.2 tonnes, so we saved about 100 kilos. And we should have burnt 1.8 tonnes, I think if I select fuel, fuel used, 1.7, so yeah, about 100 kilos saved. Looking good. Two tonnes, yeah, unfortunately cockpit lighting, 12.1, won't be fixed. It's a big overhaul and they want to do it right, so devs do not have to tweak their planes multiple times. Yeah, understood. I, well, yeah, we're going to stream again soon, but I was having a play with the Zebo mod after the stream, and just with lighting, I just with the with that mod as well, I just could not get. It was so dark, so so dark. It's always been minimums, dark, there, hasn't minimums, it? Minimums, approaching minimums. Uh, disabled with style. Thank you very much. Two years as a member. I uh, hope you're doing well. Been off Microsoft Flight Sim for months now. But going back now, Dan Block Two is impressive. Phoenix has raised the bar once again. SAS Ops in incoming go. Uh, incoming, I think we're trying to say that, but thank you very much for your continued support as a member. Yes, I mean, the FPS I'm getting is is excellent. Really, really good. I've got a uh, RTX 3080 um, uh, good CPU, two-year-old PC. No problem at all. I'll go outside. It'll be loud out here, but look how smooth it looks. Really, that's really smooth. Wonderful. 
I am James. X-Plane 12 has 200 people using it, less than X-Plane 11. Uh, that says something, I think. Oh, really? How are you getting those figures? Or is that off Steam? Yeah, we can bear in mind, I don't... Well, I don't use Steam for X-Plane. So I don't know if you... That's where the figures you've, you've got from. MH, do you have Rex at Seasons? I don't, MH. Yeah, I heard that name, Howitza, that the uh, Tolis A340 is one of the aircraft not affected by the lack of lighting. Yeah, I heard that. The Phoenix 74, yeah, well, actually, that is quite dark. But the Zebo is very, very dark at the moment. Oops, just seen some buffering in the stream. Sorry about that, guys. She'll be good now. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that to me two tons. I noticed switching the light fix script on and off affects the default lighting where you need to reload the plane environment, yeah. I'm really excited for my birthday. Uh, I hope you have a good birthday in a couple of weeks. And you're going to Toulouse, I remember you mentioning last stream. My Delta 11, uh, nope, never flown the classics, only ever the uh, NG and the Max. MGS1, besides GSX Pro and Navigraph, there are no third party things installed, right? I'm not talking about scenarios. That is correct. All I have is Navigraph and GSX, and the rest is stock Microsoft. It's nothing else. I am a firm believer that minimizing the amount of plugins is a good thing in a simulator. So I install scenery on a stream by stream basis as well. So I've installed and downloaded the Flight Beam Studios Toulouse scenery, which I already owned, and the Indie Builds Heathrow scenery. Tested it for the sector, uh, a stream to make sure it's all working correctly. Stream now, and as soon as the stream's finished, I'll uninstall it. That way, two things. One, it won't conflict with any potential updates in the future, and when I re-download it, I'll have the latest version of said scenery. Sorry. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. So, Paris Orly. Um, my, I was going to stream from Paris, okay, Paris to Heathrow, but I thought that's not a very long sector, 45 minutes, and I've subsequently forgotten to update Nightbot. <laughs> so sorry, it was to lose Flight Beam Studios. I'll update that now. Professional streamer here. I did change sort of last night, last minute. But I do have Paris all night, all in my jet stream, so it's considering. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. There we are. I've updated Nightbot. Adam, that is exciting news. I did see Fly J Sim talk about this. Will you be streaming the uh, 200 version for when it leaves the hangar? Absolutely. So the 737 200, um, and I don't know about the 72, but they they've been. I think one of the devs who who does most of the work, he, he had some, uh, I think, some personal time off, and he, he made quite an emotional post on Discord. So I do really feel for the team. But he said, "Yeah, it is on the way now, and it's going to have a gravel kit, which would be really cool." Not only that, the 200 is going to come with a retrofitted FMC. As per the real 200, but is it Nolan Air? A few other 200s have, so it'll be great. So you can actually take it online and fly to some sort of uh, I'd have airports, which would be great. Elliot Smith, minimum seniors is great until you have to do that. Yes, you do. Uh, obviously, have that issue. So if you divert, you you do risk diverting to a stock scenery airport. But uh, I mean. <laughs> so be it if that happens. MGS, what about x 12? Sam Modern still used for you, or you de-scoped it? I think Sam it sort of comes in automatically so I use, <coughs> excuse me, Orbex series. Um, minimums, minimums. Yeah, I, all I have is Fly with Lua, uh, X Pilot, and, and the plugin associated with that. B2 volume control, which works with Fly with Lua. Um, and that's it. I don't know who's a huge amount. Headshake. I've got a headshake plugin as well. I think I can get rid of that because X-Plane 12.1 is updating. 
to it. I'm head shaking. Uh, Alex Patterson, thank you very much for joining as a member. I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are. Join the customers in chat and the members only Discord, buddy. Thank you very much. Drive, there is a full motion 737200 sim in England. Really? Whereabouts? It'd be quite cool to have a go on. Oh, I'm completely bung bunged up. Oh, can't breathe out of my left nose. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. Excuse me, I'm just going to blow my nose again. Adam, I'm hoping that INS will be available on the 732. Yeah, whether they'll include it, because it relied on the SIVA plugin, didn't it? Third-party software, which is no longer updated, so whether they're making their own. They should perhaps consider contacting Felis, but his SIVA INS is really good. I think it's the same one that was in the 7472, the car carousel one. Um, Andy, you're looking forward to the 200 as well. Uh, I do miss the old eardrum killer. Yeah, Felis 7472 is the best for that for now. Norco says, is it true that pilots have trading cards? I saw this trend recently where people ask pilots for these cards. No. <laughs> What's that? I've never heard of that in my life. It's not an Instagram pilot figure, is it? <laughs> um, says, and he has me installed to yell at him on the checklist. Yep, yeah, you are my voice. You will always be the response to the checklist. Or you're, no, sorry, you're reading the checklist. I will always be having your checklist reading. Driver, aerospace experience in Peterborough. £200 for an hour in the 200. That's my neck of the woods. Driver, do you know where I'm from? I'm from Spalding. Spalding, Lincolnshire, where I was born and bred. It's a Delta Airlines thing. Trading cards. I don't have any Delta Airlines pilots trading cards. Should I? Should I collect them? My oh my. Pascal, V1 just wants to do a stream where he breaks the plane, but he's had problems with OBS, now I'm here. We've we got to test this stuff before you stream. Everything's going smoothly here, you know, Airbus, Airbus Pro, Airbus Pro number two. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesper, just got my medical withdrawn due to lung issues from COVID. I'm really sorry to hear that, buddy. Uh, I remember watching your stream during my training, and I find comfort in them now, thanks for the content. Very sorry to hear that, Jesper. COVID, COVID has a, a long-term impact on a lot of people, um, so obviously very, very sorry to hear that's the case. But um, you know, chin up and uh, be positive. There's a lot to, in life to enjoy, and uh, glad that the, the streams are enjoyable uh, and uh, you find some, uh, let's say, relief in watching. Them. Thanks, buddy. Ah, oh, so I can't get the Delta trading cards. Oh. Anyway, looking forward to when the 380 or A350 is released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes, uh, is it fly by wire making a 380 and then India making a 380 as well, or was it 350? 350, isn't it? Ah, Philippe, I just checked my CPL yesterday to get in my multi engine. I'm super happy. Good man. Congratulations, buddy. IR next. Ah, Manic, very good. There we go. This is superb, isn't it? La Rochelle. I might or might not have been into La Rochelle. Uh, a little dicky birdie told me it's a very short runway for a 737. Like trying to get one in there, guys. <laughs> it's doable, but tight. <laughs> Stefan Hayner, can I play the Delta trading cards like a game of Pokemon? Brilliant. Hey, hands up, hands up in chats. Look, I know I'm a, a line captain. 
uh, of age around 30. But hands up if you had Pokemon on their Game Boy when you were younger. Hands up in chat. My hand is up high. I had Pokemon Red or a Charizard on it. I bet I could name the OG 150 Pokemon. I could probably name half. Pokemon Red. And then I got a Game Boy Color. And I got Pokemon Yellow with Pikachu. And then and then it all went rubbish, didn't it? OG 150 was where it was at. And then they added another 600 Pokemon. And I don't know any of those. But the OG... OG 150 gang. We're all here. <laughs> Sing the Poke Rap. What's that? And I saw the original Pokemon movie in the cinema. One with Mew in it. The 151st Pokemon. And Mewtwo. Mewtwo, remember, you had to catch with the Master Ball. I, I remember playing Pokemon and I wasted my Master Ball on, uh, you know, a rat a Rattata. <laughs> And then, and then I couldn't, I couldn't catch the Mewtwo, even with an Ultra Ball. It's impossible. Look at this. Look at this. This it, somewhere in the back of my brain is terms I've not used in 20 years, <laughs> 25 years. OG Red. I had Red. What was it? Red and Blue. Yeah, Red was the. That's the one you wanted. Everyone wanted the Charizard. Amazing. Yeah, well, I remember getting the uh, trading card. Yeah, I do. Ah, oh. oh yeah, crazy. Ah, oh, if I kept, if I kept the put fortune up. Amazing. Andy, you're too old to have Game Boy. Too busy spattering on ancient rear engine Volkswagens, chasing the ladies of the era in the Beetle. <laughs> well, you probably had the Capazine, did you? Eh? <laughs> Brilliant. Kevin, you had red then. Sil yeah, silver was when it started adding an extra hundred Pokemon, wasn't it? And all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then you had to do the... Uh, who, who was your arch nemesis? And then you had right at the end the Masters, didn't you? And then you'd have to go and catch you two. Oh, I can't remember. Brendan, hope you're doing well. Uh, have you seen the results of Bahrain qualifying? I watched the Bahrain qualifying right until the start of the stream. In fact, whilst the intro was playing off, I was just watching the timer go to zero. Yes, uh, I think somewhat. Uh, let's, uh, let's not have any spoilers here because some people perhaps didn't watch it live. They might want to watch the highlights. Um, I think this. Uh, I think it, yeah. Let's see how it plays out. I've, I've subscribed to Now TV, so I was sort of sat on the fence based off last season. I think it will be. More of the same, but uh, let's see what happens in the race tomorrow. I've completely forgot traffic, the, the race. Great. I forgot the race was on a Saturday. Oh, what? Ah, that's it. Uh, 500 feet above and closing. Uh, Here. <sighs> I've not had the issues for a while. Ah, oh, and an RA, wonderful. Do I do I call someone? X extra extra RVSM. <sighs> yes, a thousand feet is the minimum clearance. It was the jumbo I fear. Was that Lafonza jumbo? It could be driver. So I'm dealing with it. Comply or fry. <coughs> well, it is a Friday. The children aren't at school. Excuse me, I'm just going to blow my nose. Uh, may I ask you how you funded your flight training? I'm looking to begin training, but I'm struggling to find the funds for it. Yes, Louis, I um, had to take a, a flight training loan out. Um, I finished school, worked at the supermarket, 
did my A-levels, but I didn't want to go to university. Um, but saved what I could for accommodation uh, and paid for that my own way. And I took a 75, I think it was 70, 75,000 pound loan out from BBVA, which uh, with Oxford Aviation Academy at the time they had a relationship with. And um, they organised um, loans. And uh, the deal was you finish your ATPL frozen, or CPLIR, uh, and you wouldn't have to start paying your loan for a year. Uh, or until you got your first job and the good news was once you had a, a job offer they would extend the loan to pay for a time rating which I did. Mark Murphy why not comply with the RA because uh, this guy is just clearly spamming me so you know uh, if it was a, a genuine RA yeah I would obviously apply with it but uh, <laughs> uh, here's the Vatsim Network when aircraft <laughs> on a Friday evening there we are Oh, weird, on that side. Okay. On that spy is 2,000 feet above you. Interesting. It's backed off now. Let's see what happens when we get close. Yeah, it could have been a mistake, I don't know. <laughs> Steve, we need a rear gunner. <laughs> How are we doing anyway? Where's top of descent? 12.47 About 20 minutes? We could probably start setting up now probably. Before it gets busy Approaching Nont Excellent Right then, so Setting up the Airbus Where's my Descent preparation. There we are. So get your charts out, which I pre-selected. Flight plan, descent winds. Now I've already done my winds. Or did I? Did I do them? No, I think I haven't. So don't I select any any one of these wind data? Oh, whoops! I forgot to put this in wind request. Oh yeah, I've got a company message. It'll be the load sheet won't sit and on time departure. I think. I'm missing flying Alpaca Airways with you Sky as well. I haven't done it. Wind data uplink, has that done it? There we are, blue. Blue's a good colour, isn't it? So winds are in, arrivals in as well, rad nav. It's, all this is automatic, you know, Airbus. Add uh, performance crews. Verify correct descent rate in the cabin, yes. We'll do that below 10,000 feet, or when we're cleared approach. Seems to vary from operator to operator. Uh, approach page then. So, Q&H. What is the Q&H in Heathrow? Let's see if we can get up a D80 off of this. So, uh, Phoenix, my flights, Heathrow. How do I get the D80s? I did it earlier. How do I get... There was a way of getting the digital 80s on this. Oh, probably it's not on... Oh. Yeah, they don't have it. Okay, not a problem. Um, so... That, oh, that's the routine. Oh. Ah, so, oh, sorry. I didn't even see that there. Arrivals. There we are. So, uh, departure runway 27 right. Arriving 27 left. We changed that to 27 left. Transition level 80. Data link clearance is available. Departing aircraft. Make initial contact with delivery. Surface wind. Oh, so the strong winds haven't become apparent yet. Nine zero twelve. Still a good crosswind. Oh, do I put the winds in? There we are. One nine zero twelve. Q and H is uh Oh, where's the weather one? Altimeter nine and nine oh one. It's low pressure. Let's drop loads. And uh, temperature is uh, 8 degrees. There we are. Uh, ILS 27 left then. There we are. So 
Vic, which of course is minimum is 277. And uh, config 3 or full? What is the default? Full, I think. I'm going to go full to heavy. I don't need to do the frequencies. I don't need to do the courses. I've set the minimums. Vectors or via Ocon. On to 27 left. Missed approach. I'll put the thrust levers to Toga and put the tray table out. Climb straight ahead, passing 1080 or 0 0.0. What's later? It's probably 0 0.0. Uh, left turn track 147 to 2000. We're passing 6 miles, going to 3000. 2000 2, feet is the initial stop altitude. Right, and landing performance. It's a flipping long runway in. Heathrow, 27 left. Where do I want to vacate? November 6? I think that's where I landed when we landed in the 340 for across the pond. It was the last time we flew to Heathrow. So November 6. Is that 325? Let's have a look at the performance. I'll put good. Uh, so dry. Climb metar. Landing weight. No, it's not six. I just want to see what it is. Well, I can work it out. What's our actual gross weight? 65.6. So fuel. It's a flat plan. 3.9, and we've got how much on board? 4.9. A little bit of a ton. So our landing weight will be 64.6. Oh, what's the max landing weight? <laughs> Isn't that above the max landing weight? Um. Uh, what's the max landing weight? Isn't it like 64.3? <coughs> Whew, 78. Let me just have a look here quickly. I don't know if the sim brief one is correct. Cannot take a lot of extra fuel, can it? Ah, 63.5. <laughs> What did I say it was? What? No, that's the estimated. Sorry, I was looking at that wrong. 64.5 and our landing weight is... Uh, oh, we're all good! <laughs> we're all good. 64.3. 200 kilos. No problem. 200 off max. That's crazy. You cannot... So, you know, 320, great. You cannot take a lot of extra fuel with a full load of passengers, can you? So 64.3, let's try low order brake, we use max reverse, it'll be an all manual landing, flat full. So that says 2,000 metres, we have auto brake low, and we want it right, 2,400, so that's fine. Auto brake low. There we are. Panic over, that was close, but I don't want to take a huge amount of extra fuel, do we? Right, briefing's done. We know where we're going to land. <laughs> we know where we're going to stop. I'm trying to. And my landing, my practice landing earlier was... Well, mixed. <laughs> I floated and floated. Yeah, oh, I need some practice. Welcome aboard, Michael. Uh, blood get. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the subscription. All stuffed up with a cold at the moment, so I just uh, had a bit of a nose blowing moment. <laughs> Elliot just cruised with the speed break up, that works, brilliant. Well, it looks like that guy in the 7 4 backed off slightly. Let's see what happens when we get a little bit closer with ATC. Is there any London controllers on yet? Or is it just approach? Oh, there's no ATC at all. Well, Heathrow has it, but there's no, there's no uh, aero controller at all in any of the airspace we're flying. Oh, there, there is London North, but they, they won't be covering our airspace. Uh, almost everyone I know is dealing with a cold. Yeah, it just came on on Tuesday. I did the two streams on Sunday and Tuesday, uh, but uh, not before. Hi Daniel B, hope you're doing well. Doing just fine, thank you very much. Alex, just do a 73 and land overweight. <laughs> well, yeah, the 320 can't dump fuel though, can it? 
So I guess in a non-normal situation, you can land overweight in the 320. Surely? Mark Turner, using the SDS, yes, the brother... Yes, that's on. We discussed that at the start. Ah, look. There's Northern France ahead. Did you see Jersey there? Jersey's the first larger island, then Guernsey in the distance there in the cloud. Remember, we're not live time. It'll be dark now for a live time. We are six hours behind live time. So right now it's 1834 Zulu in the sim. Sorry, 1834 in real life, 1234 in the sim, six hours behind. Yeah, what I find two tons, the US, I see your comment there, the US generally comes on line regardless of events, there's a lot of ATC isn't there? I do usually, majority of the time, base my streams around some events. It, it, it does increase the uh, immersion incredibly. Uh, no, it can't dump fuel. No, I didn't think it could, Steve. Uh, three scratch. Is there an asymmetrical committal height you use in the airlines, or is the power sufficient for bulk landings? Asymmetrical committal height. Uh, I'm not sure what you're getting at with your question there, three scratch. Um, there's no such thing as an asymmetrical committal height. Um, if you bounce or have a bulk landing, if there's sufficient runway available, you can land off the bounce. Would have been touching down within the touchdown zone still. Uh, otherwise, the go around is always an option, um, so long as you've not selected reverse thrust. Adam just hit Tom said, "How much parking is in London?" Oh, there's sufficient parking because Heathrow has a gazillion stands, but it is incredibly busy there. Looks like the approach controller. There doesn't seem to be anyone holding, or is there? Ooh, is there? Uh, they might be holding. Just because I could see an aircraft in to Heathrow, but flying away from the airport. Excuse me. Chim boy. <laughs> What's up, Can you do a Scottish action? Uh, accent? Uh, no. <laughs> Scottish? <laughs> there you go, done. That's the only thing I can say. Purple. <laughs> Go on, easy, eh, Craig? I was looking at that for you. 13 13 Zulu, say 19 13 Zulu. Uh, three scratch back to an SOP for my approved training organisation, then we can't commit to landing single engine. Unless we've met restrictive criteria by 200 feet. Uh, can't commit to landing single engine. Really? No. I mean, yeah, a single engine go around, uh, bulk land. Yeah, this is where it gets complicated. If if you go around below minimums, the missed approach climb gradient is based on you executing the missed approach at, at your minimums. If you get below and bulk landing single engine, then go around. Can you guarantee the missed approach climb grade? You can't. It, it's a grey area. So I think some airlines have specific SOPs regarding that. Um, so if you're below minimum three scratch and you decide to continue, are you committed then to land regardless? What happens if you have a bulk landing? Some. The, the, the good news is below minimums. Yeah, if you decide to go around single engine, you can't guarantee your climb gradient. However, if that's an issue, terrain. For example, like Innsbruck, I know Innsbruck have bulked landing procedures for both two and single engine. So there is specific guidance for you to apply. Same way my operator has specific engine out SID clearance in the event of an engine failure. You can get some operators have engine out SIDs you know, to, to actually fly on a, a pre assigned SID. Uh, but yeah, that, that's you know, every airline has different ways of dealing with those things. Good, good discussion point. Oh, there's quite a few aircraft holding. Great. Let's see. What is it with me and... We had our fuel... A uh, minimum fuel call 
uh, on Sunday, Sunday evening, didn't we? Was that Monday evening? Monday or Sunday, can't remember. But uh, yeah, that was that was from a busy Vatsum event at an airport not really designed for a huge amount of traffic. Yeah, let's see what happens. You'll have to remind me, ladies and gentlemen, how to hold. <laughs> what do I do? Here I have to, and then hold, isn't it? Yeah, okay, okay, that's if you have to hold at a point. Free scratch, yeah, we're committed for training purposes, we would use both engines, but if real single engine situation, we would land regardless. That's interesting, free scratch. Yeah, I mean, we don't have that. Uh, I mean, we were discussing this in uh, with some instructors. Sim training, for those of you interested, for those that do your... Or for those... I know the majority of you aren't, aren't pilots, but anyone here who is a pilot will, will do sim training every six months. And every 12 months they'll renew their IR. And in that sim, it's the same thing pretty much every check. You'll do a circle to land, you'll do a single engine... Uh, v V1 cut, you'll do a single engine go around at minimums, you'll do a single engine approach to landing. And this is the way the industry's been. However, the industry is moving away from this criteria because statistically, uh, someone told me this, statistically, you are more likely to get struck by lightning five times than do a single engine go around in your career. So that's the same, the same odds. You're five times more likely to be struck by lightning five times than do a single engine go around in your career. But we do it every six months, we train pilots how to do it, because it's the most critical point on which you execute to go around and have a V1 cut. The industry is moving towards what's we called EBT. Does anyone in chat know what EBT stands for? We are moving, and we would have been in it sooner had it not been for the COVID pandemic. We're moving to EBT training in the future. The industry is as a whole. Some airlines are using EBT. Sorry. You've got it flying water. Evidence based training. Okay. <laughs> Estimated beer time. Electroshock behaviour therapy. Earning before taxes. Evidence based training. Yes, that's what we're looking for. So, the way the industry looks at evidence based training is they'll take something that is an issue in the industry. The biggest industry issue at the moment of accidents is runway incursion excursion. And it is. The way that flight training, pilot training will, will, will go in the future is that every sort of 12 months, 6 months, you'll go in the sim for your check and your check will be based off what particular issues are going on in the airline. So airline might see an airline might see trends. For example, you know, an airline might see an increase in the amount of go-arounds or unstabilised approaches. Maybe, let's say, the airline starts flying into a new destination and it's a challenging destination. And and uh, there's been an increase in, uh, uh, let's say, unstabilised approaches. So so they might then gear the training towards high energy approach prevention. And as an industry, that's really good because it looks at what's going on in the industry and tailors training towards it. Now, my operator, we use evidence-based training and we cover everything over a period of three years every six months. Um, and then the check is pretty standardised, and that's the but the check will be moving to a more evidence-based training format in the years to come. Now, I'm very proud of you know I work as an operator who has, uh, and I'm not discrediting any other airlines training department, but we have a, a well-recognised training department. Everyone who I've trained and has flown or worked in different training departments has commented on on how thorough our training is because we cover every eventuality um, and I don't know if any of you read the the instant did you I know a lot of you subscribe to Blorankio is it Blorankio I can't pronounce it but but have a look at the uh, report in and I'm you know there could be very good pilots in this airline I don't know but did you see what happened in the Pakistan International Airlines flight in was it Karachi the, the the crew that that uh, executed a go around after they forgot to lower the gear, both engines struck the runway, both engines were damaged, and then they ended up uh, crashing, killing everyone on board. If you actually read into that report, what happened and what the flight crew did, it was shocking, absolutely shocking. You know, and I I'm not one to talk down to 
to to other airlines, and I'm not pointing out any particular airline here, but it was it was I could not believe what I read and the experience that ca the captain had, and I will reassure you now that in many parts of the world, in the majority of places in the world, uh, that 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 mentality does not exist. Really, it doesn't. Uh, and I mean, in, in other places, in all over the world, in, in in Europe, the US, in Asia, the majority of airlines have fantastic training departments with very responsible crew. You CRM to ensure safe flights and efficient operation. And I could not believe it, it's very easy to sit down in, in, in here and, and look at it, and read the report, and go, "Oh, I wouldn't have done that." In the environment, it's very different, but that that just did not would not happen certainly not my airline at the airline i work for and the vast 99.9 percent .9 of the airlines out there it was crazy so yeah uh mgs you can post a link of it it won't work yeah so check out blonde uh Calerio's channel his video on it av herald's got a great report read into it, 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 it i couldn't believe it reading it uh yeah mental pilot would most likely have done a review of it as well uh, oh, it hasn't done yet. Uh, yeah, it happened a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, uh, I must reassure you that 99.9% .9 of airlines uh, and cultures would never allow something like that to happen. And I'm very pleased to see and and train crew now who really infuse with CRM and safety. Uh, and I, I've only been an instructor for sort of eight years. Uh, but I really see how important CRM is and cultural differences and how it can impact an operation. And I work in an airline that has lots of different cultures, uh, but everyone has the same level playing field, and we always stress safety before anything else. Anyway, we digress a lot. Yep, yeah, check out that video. Thanks for sharing, Don and Mosina. It, it's an eye opener. It's an eye opener. Craig Maddox, does landing at Innsbruck require specific training? It does. It's a Category C airport. That would require specific sim training and uh, no doubt a number of sectors to be flown into the airport with a, uh, a training captain trained to land at that airport. Anyway, we digress. 10 miles till top of descent. No ATC yet. We'll start our descent into Roxock any restrictions yeah what we'll do we'll set 130 that's the first restriction we need to comply with at hazel so 130 and I'll, I'll push it in go airbus go in uh cl closed descent <laughs> down we go oh it's been a long time since i did like tom at target star devo city yes if you're enjoying the chat enjoying the phoenix a320 uh, don't forget to like the video. Helps out the channel a lot. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest content. Thanks, my guys. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of the Phoenix A320? I think it's uh, superb. Um, I don't fly the Airbus. I really don't know what it's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but the amount of immersion you get from an add-on like this is phenomenal. Managed descent, thank you. Alex, it uh, might be a really basic uh, question. What is your favourite approach in real life if you can't want to answer? I have a new favourite. Corfu. I've always loved Corfu, runway 34, and now 16 have flown as well. It's because I have to hand fly on a 10 degree offset approach for about 2,800 feet. Really enjoy it. Uh, so I've not been there for a while. Oh, I've got loads of flights coming up, as I was saying earlier. I don't wish to disclose a huge amount of what I get on with at my operator, oh. but I am going to become a training captain. Uh, well, if I pass, <laughs> I best not say too much in case I don't pass it. But yeah, did my ground school, all passed that. I was out of base uh, a couple of weeks ago. Next is my training line. No, I've got sim training next, and then uh, line training thereafter. So I've got a lot of flights coming up. I've got to go out of base for a week to do all that uh, training, but uh, a lot of sectors coming up, which I'm looking forward to. I don't fly very much these days. <laughs> Zero three two one short. It's a brilliant add-on. It's so very smooth. Only downside, it's an Airbus. There we are, right over the Atlantic, just north of the Sherbourg Peninsula, right turn now, next will be the Isle of Wight. Remember, six hours behind live time, this would be a night flight otherwise. Live weather, of course. 
Daffy, yeah, though there will be a training training captain. But who trains the training training captain, huh? <laughs> yeah, try Corfu. Corfu's a great approach. Love Corfu. Um, Malta. Always like flying into Malta. I love island destinations, really. Well, it's doing its 270 knot thing. And the blue arrow is where we're estimated to be, isn't it? 130 Hazel. Look at it holding its speed nicely. There's that jumbo. Yeah, behave yourself, sir. The training, training, training captain, of course. <laughs> it's like, but what machine built that machine? Which built that machine? Which built that machine? <laughs> Where did it start? Yep, upcoming triple seven for Flight Factor and PMEG. Yeah, let's see if we can do both. Uh, I've not. Uh, I don't have any relationship with PMEG. I've tried contacting them multiple times. They never respond to me. Uh, but um, the uh, I got a lovely message from Flight Factor, and they have. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at them at some point. <laughs> That's all I can say at this stage. <laughs> Never, never flown a triple seven on any stream. Chicken and the egg, exactly, Joti. That's what it all boils down to. Aaron, good question. Do you think we're ever going to see better fuel for faster engines? I don't know about faster engines, but sustainability and and uh, fuel. Uh, you know, there's uh, only so much the airline industry could do. But if they could start manufacturing fuel. Which is from reusable sort of, uh, you know, uh, oil from a <laughs> from a deep fat fry. I don't know how they do it, but uh, that, that is the way it needs to to move uh, forward. Now, isn't Boom quite exciting? Aren't they making a, a supersonic jet? And isn't it United and Boom have a contract by 2029 to start making uh, supersonic business jets? That's quite cool. JP, no bias, but 777 is the best. Yeah, it is a cool aircraft. Yes, well, it's primarily a long-haul jet, but we'll, we can find some shorter sectors to find it. You'll have to tell me, is there any 777s utilising shorter sectors? Actually, you know what? I once caught a 777 from Singapore to Jakarta when I was doing a bit of travelling. Uh, what's that, a bit of travelling? I went and visited my uncle who lived out in Indonesia for his business for a short period of time. I went with my stepbrother, and we flew the 380, Singapore Airlines, one of the first ever 380s. It was back in 2008, from Heathrow to Singapore. Then we got a 777-200 from uh, Singapore to Jakarta. It was quite a short flight. Yeah, US and Asia, they use 777s on short sectors. <laughs> Bad hippo, yes, not ideal. Uh... Dope says, sorry for repeating. That's alright. Uh, and if I miss, guys, if you ever write a comment and I miss it, I'm not doing that on purpose. They do sometimes come thick and fast. I'm then looking at the aircraft. Sometimes I skip them. So sorry, Dope, if I missed it. He says, sorry for repeating, but when you reach a waypoint with speed restriction of 200 knots, is it for the entire sector until you reach the next waypoint or just at the single point? Yeah, so you're not likely to see a restriction that then increases. Um, so, yeah, if you get a restriction at 250, you see there, then 220. I've never seen it then go up again. Um, so yeah, you'll only see, see them on arrivals, uh, and then yeah, you'll usually fly that speed no higher again for the rest of the sector. Good question. BA did Caribbean hops, didn't they? Oh, cool. Uh, Mike Delta, Travel Captain, when, not if, <laughs> you apply 320 license. Make sure these streams will be noted in the evaluation. Brilliant. No. <laughs> There we are, look, there's the uh, Isle of Wight coming into view. Sim's looking fantastic in there. Yeah. Aaron, have you flown a 7.8? Yes, I've flown the uh, default 7.8 a few times. Yeah, it's okay, isn't it? Maybe I should fly that again soon. The Kuro mod. Inbound to Begto, no restrictions, Hazel. Still no ping on that Sim. We might have to enter a hold quite properly. Let's we'll see what happens. Put the seatbelt sign on before I forget. 
Uh, yeah, I'll just have a little look at the company messages as well. Uh, receive messages. Ooh. Delays. Load sheets. And load sheets. I'll accept the latter one. Sandown Airfield on the Isle of Wight has an excellent pizza oven. Brilliant driver. I flew into Sandown during my hour building. Sandown from Fenland. Echo Golf. Uh, Charlie Lima, isn't it? Yeah, and Lima Charlie's London City. Charlie Lima is Fenland. Charlie Lima. Sandown's down there, isn't it? Oh, is that Bembridge? That's the tarmac one. I can't remember. Bit too short, both of them, for the 320. Uh, one of my first ever flights as a kid was British Mint. Really upset they went. Yeah. Yeah, long gone now. Heathrow, Manchester was their main base. They operated the 320, didn't they, at the end as well? <laughs> MH, if your operator said they're going to change to 73 to 320, would you fly for the Air Airbus or leave the company? Hey, maybe we have Airbuses. Maybe I've thrown a curveball. Um, I'm very happy with my operator, so if they did change, if I change fleet, I would, uh, I'd happily stay here. Yeah, baby BMI, yeah. I remember them as well, showing that. Alright, approaching Begto, next is Hazel. There's an aircraft rapidly descending above us. Really rapidly descending. And there is the south coast of the UK, Southampton, right on the nose. Still no ding dong yet from Patsy. Uh, Seven Aviator, have you flown the 700 in real life? I have. Not, not many times. It's like a race car. My memory of BMI is constant cancellations and delays on business trips to London. Oh dear. Yes, I should think uh, with the advent of low-cost carriers like EasyJet, Ryanair, Jet2 uh, in the UK, it's uh, just couldn't compete in the market. Flybe tried with the Embraer's, didn't work at all. Now approaching Hazel. So after Hazel, what we'll do, we'll descend to 7-0, that's the Ocon restriction, we'll set that one mile before Hazel. That's just operator SOPs I'm flying. Um, yes, did you see in real world aircraft on the side from you like now? What is angle? Which radar picks traffic around? Um, at my operator between 2,700 feet, you wouldn't usually pick up TCAS traffic outside of that. I think that could be adjusted based off company specific stuff. Oh yeah, Tamango, flight recorder. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'll open that up. I won't turn it on now because I'm quite far out, but when I get on base leg, remind me chat to start the flight recorder. Still no ding dong from Heathrow. As to be fair, it's a little bit outside for the approach controller's range. Oh, it's so busy. So many aircraft at the whole point of 27 right. Oh, there's aircraft holding as well. Ooh, let's see what happens. Right, one to go. Let's go down to uh, 7 0. Now, 
Is there no call in the airbus approaching your cleared level? Doesn't it not get like a bugle sound or anything like that? Carl, on the 73, if you need to set a higher barrier minimum at a high elevation airport, do you really have to turn dial all the way to reach that value? Or is there an easier way? Uh, now, in the real aircraft, if you turn it, there's two sort of settings. One to do it slowly, and if you rotate it all the way, it'll increase quicker. It can't. Neither PMDG or Zebo models it perfectly. It sort of works okay. Occam's stack with aircraft. Fantastic. Oh, the engine spalling up just to get back to the speed. Yeah, I can go to sleep. Uh, to be fair, 0321 short in the descent, I've not really done much. <laughs> I've been staring at chat the whole time. <laughs> I'm just letting it do its thing. Next is its decel point, 250 knots at Lima Lima Sierra 01. Ah, the altitude alert's only a manual flight. Interesting wobbly seahorse, thanks for the input. Yeah, the 73, it doesn't matter. Manual automat automatic, 900 feet to go. You'll get the bugle. Hi, I'm Madman UK. Is it late on the parade as usual? No problem, we're here now. Flight deck sim, I recently watched a mentor pilot channel, the 737-300 in difficulty. The captain applied full throttle for a go around. The captain could not get the nose down. Yes, uh, thrust pitch couple. So if you fly pull, apply full power and made no input in pitch, the aircraft will naturally pitch up quite quickly. It catches a lot of guys on transition type ratings who've flown the Airbus, who are now converting to the NG. So they start manually flying and go around, it really catches them out. Because what happens is you set go around thrust, you actually, when you get to 15 degrees, have to pitch down to stop the nose rising. So, yeah, if it was unfamiliar with the 300 and there was an incident, that, that has happened in the past. Mad Matt UK, is there a procedure for a go around? Yeah, you move that to Toga and then go make yourself a coffee. Just put the flaps up. It's a little bit more dynamic in the NG. I'm approaching Ockham here. I'm going to be at Ockham 15 miles. At what point do I actually contact the approach controller myself? I've got north approach, south approach, final approach. So I, south approach, won't it be? One, three, four. Oh, uh, talk of the devil. He heard me. Why on earth can't I hear anyone on this frequency? Have I forgotten to do... Why is it so quiet? London, hello, it's uh, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, descending to flight level 70 Ockham. Good 451, turn right, heading 090 degrees. Midland 1, I'm Fago here, Fellow Hector, hello. I just gonna need, need to look you around, I'm afraid. Um, turn the right, heading 220 degrees, and if you can climb flight level 130. Uh, climb flight level 130, uh, heading 220. Do what you need to do, Midland 1, I'm Fago. <laughs> I am. <laughs> right, this is non standard. <laughs> 130, This is non standard. And, uh, yeah, two, 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 one, right what happens now? Was it right or left turn? We're gonna go right. I'm climbing back to 130. <laughs> I think was it a left or right? I can't remember. Right, this is very non standard. You'd be very, very unlikely to be told to climb. They'd be coordinated, obviously, yeah, to be fair. Um, this would have been coordinated with a London controller. So, in reality, if it was air traffic control, they would have said 20 minutes ago, even maybe messaged um, uh, Bordeaux, and they would have said, okay, uh, you know, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, delays in Heathrow, reduce to uh, 220 knots in the descent on conversion, expect holding at Ockham, and you wouldn't have descended as low as this. So, that, to be fair to the approach controller, He's doing his best six, six, to accommodate nine, this traffic by doing this. Malta one zero two D send slide level nine. Right. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens. 
Uh, so I'll turn it fuel for Manchester. No worries in maintaining one one zero. Just for, to note it. Uh, two point four tons, and we've got four. Ooh, spooling up. Oh, it's except I, I just want the yeah, air. I don't want to go to two seventy. Let's just do two fifty. So no, pull two fifty. There we go. Uh, MGS1, uh, also structures like to show exercise where you need to keep altitude, pitch only with thrust. That's true. Uh, Tim is here, sorry to hear that, Tim. How about the UK's procedure for going? We discussed. Summon Aviator, we've discussed. Respond to your time, say again, brilliant. Uh, Tim, hope you're doing well, mate. He goes, hi, mate, uh, hope you're well. Uh, oh, sadly, my father passed away two weeks ago. Oh, Tim, I'm very, very sorry to hear that. I hope you've. Be keeping well in the last couple of weeks since your father's passed away, and um, uh, this is a long-term member of the channel. Is now a subscriber. But, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for popping in and uh, stay close to your friends and family. That's all I can I can recommend. Thanks, buddy. Right, one to go. Not if you're going. We're going away from the airport. I'm just going to reduce speed. There's no point going fast, burning extra fuel in the wrong direction. So let's just bring the speed back to 220. I'm ever so quite well here. Oh, he's a lot less responsive. Phoenix really reflects that. It's a bit of a learning curve. Ah, yes. Aaron, uh, Manchester's on the diversion. Why not a more local airport? I just went with Simbrief. I think Simbrief just defaulted to Manchester. Come on, thrust! Come on, come on! Look at the speed though. Yeah, look at them. It's slow to respond. Woof. Flight level 100 ml. Maybe just forget about me because we're now heading south, back towards the Isle of Wight. Well, we sort of just imagine we're holding it, Ockham. So just now, some Midland One Alpha Echo. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, turn right heading 060 degrees. If you get a ticket, so let's please follow it. Uh, right heading 060 degrees, we'll go Midland 1 Alpha Echo. <laughs> Is that right 060? There's, an, uh, there's a departure from Gal, just climbs up, and I'm not in control of that. But then I'm Frank. Roger, I'll advise we get an RA, uh, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. <laughs> That's nothing you want to hear from a controller. <laughs> Turn right at 060. If you get an RA, follow it. Yeah, thanks for the advice. <laughs> Love it. That's fantastic. Hey, at least he's providing plenty of information. I think that's the Gatwick departure. Also, oh, he's descending, is he? That's brilliant. I would not be reassured if a controller ever told me if we get on RA, follow it. Uh, don't what's an RA? It's a resolution advisory. So it's um, the second and final stage of a TCAS uh, alerting system. So you get firstly a TA, traffic alert, it's caution, just be aware as traffic approaching you. Uh, and RA is uh, imminent. Uh, impact. Thank if you, you don't that. follow the instruction, you you might well, have a minute collision. Really so uh, yes, that's what he advised. <laughs> if you get one of those, please follow it, which we would do in real life. He's doing a good job with him out of traffic. G midi. I should think that was a real reg, wasn't it? For Midland. British Midland. Oh yeah, Patrick, watch it. Uh, finding the Phoenix very floaty. Looking forward to see how the Pro goes. Oh no, <laughs> no pressure. Listen, Pro, Pro NG73, well, barely. Uh, barely Pro, and uh, certainly not a Pro 320 um, operator. <laughs> Expect floats. I've floated on my test sector as well. <laughs> Oh, that's really ha sad, Cessna Bandit. Poor Midi, this aircraft got scrapped a few months ago. Oh. Midland 1, Alpha, I could have found... Actually, I forgot. Midland 1, Romeo, Alpha, Midland 1, Alpha, Midland 1, Alpha, Midland 1, Alpha, Midland 1, Alpha, Oh. So who was it operating for after Midi? Uh, after British uh, Midlands? Midland 1, Alpha, Echo, Midland 1, Navigation, Direct Ockham to hold. Oh, Navigation, Ockham turns to hold. Midland 1, Alpha, Echo. So, Direct to Midland... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Direct Ockham insert, and it does LNAV automatically, doesn't it? Yeah, LNAV engaged, and then hold. The published hold is 328 right hand turns. 328 right hands in 
and uh, yeah, no problem, guys. Any more tips? I'm going to make a tutorial now. Uh, 737 pilot holding tutorial for A320. No problem. Hold that big in us. Look at this. Just that's just pro. Uh, don't need V1 right simulations now. anymore. You don't need 320 sim pilot. No, I'm joking. They're fantastic content creators. But if you want an all-round, you know, just good performance. You know where to, you know who to call. Oh dear. Set a five, Bravo Lima. If you can set score seven, sorry, five, six, seven, one. Rocks of arrival. There we go. Edge of the hold. Yeah, three, two, eight, right. Five, six, seven, one. Holding two sim. Jack of all trades. You've got it. I'm like just your average all round guy. We've got two aircraft descent, five, level eight, zero. Oh dear. Over to Echo, turn right now to Ockham and leave Ockham heading 075 degrees. Uh, I'll right keep the speed at 220 uh, knots. What happens if I push it in now? What, will it do the best hold speed? Yeah, 230. Uh, right now, 1 1 2, hold that big in as published. Do you need the holding detail? Uh oh, some uh, struggling a bit. Hold at Boeing uh, big and uh, can you. I don't know if he's ready to be on that sim. Uh, I'd only recommend doing an airport like this when it's busy if you feel confident on the aircraft. You shouldn't be having to enter or ask. The controller is doing a good job accommodating that. Tamango, Captain, have you ever had to argue of ATC? No. I had one time where we were dealing with a non normal checklist after engine starts. Which cleared the fault. And three, eight, the controller said, Do you know how much longer you're going to be because you're holding up everyone? And I was a bit like, a bit taken back by that. And I just said to the controller, that, well, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, but we cannot move this aircraft until we completed the non normal checklist. I'm sorry. And I was a bit taken back by that. But they know that we're, we're not just waiting for fun, you know. Uh, we, we, I think it was a pack light, yeah, come on. There's two things with the pack. You can either have a pack reset after mass abortion, which this one did, so we can continue. Or one that said pack issue would return to stand, which is dealing with the checklist. And he did say, his words were, do you know how much longer you are? Because you're holding up everyone wanting to push that. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he did, after I said that, no one said anything. No one on radio said anything either. It took us a couple of minutes. Never, we never rush. Now I'm checking the hold at So it's done a uh, direct entry, it looks of it. Are you using the frame gen mod said ARC 0232? No. It has dropped slightly the FPS, but it's still completely acceptable. I'm in the vicinity of Heathrow, all this traffic on that suit. Good evening, Alpha Kilo, descending through 140, we're at 320 Quebec. Alpha Kilo, hello, spell defence, level 1. Says the man in front of me, in fact, the captain did the first flight fitted its wings back in the He was a wing fit for Airbus before becoming a pilot, that's really cool. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, you there? Midland 1 Alpha Echo, sorry, go ahead. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, defence, level 120. Descent flight level 120, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. 120. Alpha Echo, defence, level 100. Ah, yes. So I have to pull it. No, I'll pull. There we go. So fuel 37. Still okay. Busy in Heathrow. Aaron, so you have a tech fault, is there a Boeing or Airbus engineer at every airport? Not every airport, small airports, not. Some defects, obviously, you can dispatch with, uh, upon consultation with, with maintenance control, and you can write it up if you deferred. Depends on the issue, there's, there's a million and one different reasons. Alex Patterson, any tips uh, for practicing radio calls terminology before that sim? I watch sort of, uh, you know, live streams, maybe like this one or other content creators. Um, and uh, that sim, I think, has lots of good guidance itself. They do something called first wing events as well. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, there's good resources available online, official documentation. So, for example, the CA do a document called the CAT 413. 
Send fire level 110, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Okay. I'll have the aircraft on the coast and only be here for the vector. One, two, seven, eight, four, four, bye bye. Anyone in the hold with me? I, I think there is an aircraft for thousand, I don't know. Rhino one one two, just check you have stand up pressure set. Uh, can you repeat again? Uh, oh Rhino one two. The stand up five, Bravo Lima. The stand up five, Bravo one two. Sorry. Midland one Alpha, got a fan follow level one hundred. <laughs> Lovely James MP. Uh descent flight level one hundred, Midland one Alpha echo. Okay. Midland one Alpha got a sugar, maintain one one Uh maintain one one zero now, Midland one Alpha echo. Okay. It's quite here. I've gotta get used to Midland call sign guys, so do bear with me. Emirates. Emirates. No, Emirates, four five five Unlike heading two six zero degrees, please. Can you repeat? No. Listen, this guy is I don't know, you know. When the controller's like this, you can't have people with. You got to know how to operate the aircraft. I'm not an Airbus expert. I can get it to climb, descent, turn, hold, which is important. This controller's fantastic. Emirate four Papa Yankee for the left and heading two four five. Heading. Yeah, very busy in the hole, look. 2,000 feet below, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above in the stack. Can't actually see them, but they are here. The last 320 is flying into Heathrow at the moment, that's for sure. <laughs> Say again, Roger, what's my vector? Three Delta Mike, turn right heading 115 degrees and report out to London. And Robert Rushbrook, when in the hold and being given descent, is there a standard rate of descent you should achieve? That's a fantastic question, it's a thousand feet. Right heading 135 and report to London, 134, and some airports expect that. Yankee, defense, line, have an eight, no, I always do a thousand feet. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear flying Warner. I mean, this right, guy's. Uh, one this guy is helping him, you know. I mean, he had to say no to him there because he's obviously causing a lot of extra workload. But that's great to hear that one of the controllers did take the time to help someone that's young. I mean, what's the age? You have to be 13 for Vatsim? But if you're uh, here you're heading to the and you are level thinking level of three, trying Vatsim for the first time, I'd avoid places three. like here for the first time because it is busy and you, and you need to listen out. And I keep missing my call signs, so I need to listen out myself. wasn't me, was it? No. Um, but, um, yeah, look out for the Vatsim First Wing events. They accommodate people who are new to the network. Aaron Borson, who's good to watch on YouTube on Vatsim? Well, you've got several real airline Six pilot content creators. Three, uh, you know, myself, three, uh, 320 Sim Pilot. Uh, 737 NG driver, he's quite a new guy. Um, you've got V1 Sims, they're the ones that come off the top of my head. There's others, and uh, they've got a lot of you got a lot of normal content creators on, on YouTube. You've got um, XP Pilot, there's Captain Canada, you know, he uses that a lot, he's very proficient, but no, no doubt. Um, and there's, there's loads. I mean, I'm only naming the ones that come to the top of my mind. I generally don't watch other people's uh, content, you know, I only have the barely have enough time to do my own. Right. There are some really good ones out there. Oh, my ATC people, okay. Uh, all stations is holding big in and I'll come with starting to bring you off the hold now, so there'll be uh, no longer there. Okay, cool. Um, um, uh, I don't know any specific just dedicated controllers on YouTube. I don't know. So there's 669 six, Romeo turn. Uh, yeah, British Air Geeks is another one I've heard of as well. Nine, Romeo, right, and the Ockham, leave Ockham heading 075 degrees, speed 220. Who is that leaving Ockham? Was that speed? 669 six, Romeo, right, and Ockham, leave Ockham heading 075 degrees, speed 220. Aaron says, oh, I'm at ATC, you're New Zealand guy. Oh, I don't know him personally, but he, yeah, um, he, he's, when I've been in New Zealand streams, he's very uh, enthusiastic. So, 075 degrees. Uh, ML one zero two descent, follow up at nine, sorry. 
Level yeah, you can see he throws really around because the FPS is dropping slightly. I saw a swing around, but it's still very, very good. Yeah, so alternate fuel 3.5 now, and we took an extra 30 minutes plus contingency. MRI 4 Papa Yankee DeSanto, altitude 4 uh, Papa Yankee DeSanto, altitude 4 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 Papa Yankee DeSanto, I can't actually see this. Oh, there's an aircraft. Where's he holding? He's going all over. Just saw this guy here. Oh, my days. Get the 55 kilo to San Salvador by the 100. That's just from there, Is that Nigel? Oh, it's a 7 8. It's very cool. M Alta 1 0 8. Uh, turn the right now to begin, leave begin, heading 265 degrees. Very cool. <laughs> That's what I'd be doing right in the real aircraft begin, if I was saying it. Sticking my head out the window going, ooh, cool. Yeah. I like that. Up, thank you, everybody. Call for now, let's hear for the rector, 128. That's what I'm saying, that is. Call for now, let's hear for the rector, 128. Was he in the 320? I don't know. Right now, one, one, two, just confirm you're holding at star level of one, two, zero. Check you have some of the pressure fan. Uh, yes, I am, uh, hold, hold point about uh, one, two, zero, right now, one, two. Roger, set standard Q and H, please. Standard Q and H. Uh, standard Q and H, uh, right now, one, two. Oh dear, it looks like he's on his Q and H, not standard. That, six, that's six, gonna nine, be an issue. Romeo, defense, nine, seven, eight, three. So I, oh, it was a 320. Of course it was a 320. Thanks, uh, so much for my plane spotting skills. I thought it was a 78. <laughs> right now, 112, one, defense level of 110. One, defense level 110. One, right now, 112. Right now, going into Heathrow. Right now, going into Heathrow. That's a rare sight. <laughs> Take up the hold and dig in as published. Oh, you heard someone say, What's QH? That's not good. This is the third time around the hold now. Yep, very good patience, Cooper. There's the traffic are holding behind as well. It's gone quiet on frequency, don't like that. Uh, so there's someone below us, uh, and someone... <laughs> Just 500 feet above us as well on the right hand side. Good 669 Romeo, the Santa will attitude 4,000 feet, can H9 at 902. Sounds like you're in the cabin. Aaron, how often does a controller reference a VOR by name that you don't recognise and you have to clarify it? No, not very often. I'm not on our route network. So, OK, no, I know it's OK. Uh, CNA, who knows what CNA is? Charlie November Alpha. France. Todd Ghibli, it's just an overload event. No, it's no event on at all that he's thrown. <laughs> he's just incredibly busy. Yeah, it is Tomango, holding it quiet. Not Khan, uh, Khan. Cognac. Cognac, same as are. The bird 691, defense level 1, 2, sorry. Alright, one arrivals do certain airports, so they not use air when they park your stands as a cost thing. Yes! And efficiency as well, it's quicker to get their passengers off and on using the air stairs and the stairs in the rear, and just the air bridge. Driver, this bus fly looks very low effort. No, I know. The tray table would be out in real life. I'm not putting my virtual tray table out there. Cooper, I had to enter a hold the other night and pulled up your holding tutorial and worked flawlessly. How old is that holding tutorial? It's six years old. <laughs> still yeah, still still nothing's changed. Well, I was hoping to be on the ground now. Oh dear. 
I'll give it until half past, guys. If after half past seven minutes I haven't had any change for this clearance, I will be locking off just to get on the ground, guys. I have got work tomorrow. Aaron, uh, there's no limit for holding based on how much fuel you've got, how much endurance you can hold. Fuel permitting. Alpaca 386, Alpaca 9. Nice to hear Alpaca's here. Descent flight level 902, uh, Alpaca 3. ML 2182, turn the right, heading 090 degrees. Hopefully we'll break right, off soon. Right, heading 090, ML 2182. God, Todd, that was a long time ago. Streaming from Hanover to Torp. Was that one of the... One of the uh, group flights. And also one zero two descent at altitude. Oh, four, big boy there! That's a three forty. Descent altitude four. Oh, look at that stack. Thousand feet above, thousand feet below. Right now, one one two descent, flight level one hundred. Can you see that? That's awesome. This one's uh, level one hundred. Uh, right now, we want you. Time should be just sitting here, but this is more interesting. Very immersive, isn't it? All oh, this fuel being burnt over Ockham at the moment. I'm also one thirty. Slightly different holds. I think these guys have got. A firm just started descent. Just yeah, there's a three forty turning. Oh, look at that. Midland one Alpha Echo descent level level one hundred. Set for level 100, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, Squawk 5667. 5667, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Ah. Oh. Look at that. Alpaca Airways, Airbus A340. Ah. Oh. Simming is very, very, very impressive. Look at this. Defense, son of a level one, one, sorry. It's wicked, isn't it? <laughs> I'm also one zero two, speed one eighty right now. Speed one eighty not stem also one zero two. We would six nine one, defense, son of a level one, one, sorry. Clip that. Stand aside, Bravo Lima, descent, son of a level one, one, sorry. Good 691, you Awesome. Yeah, good 691, descent, son of a level one, one, sorry. He's rocking his wings quite a bit. I'm also one zero two about call to call to frequency one two zero eight decimal four, bye bye. Oh Adam, you're in the 340, you're in the clouds and explain. Ah, yes. You're holding, what's your holding speed? We went a little bit far. Actually, look, I'm doing 230. Is that the most efficient holding speed? That doesn't seem as efficient as it could be. I'm just going to bring it back to set hold speed. So I'll just push it in. Maybe it is efficient, I don't know. Oh, thanks, engines. <laughs> <laughs> Revving up there. Afraid, Victor, leave Ockham now, heading 080 degrees. Speed right now. Leave Ockham 080 degrees. Oh, speed a message. Zero, what was that? Oh, was that the cabin? Thank you. The sound sign of an Hi, Captain. The cabin is now secure for landing. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's good. That's quite cool. Begin. Leave begin. Heading <laughs> two six zero degrees. Speed two two zero now. Return to XP and begin 2 6 degrees. Very cool. 2 2 0 speed back from Kilo. Let's stand the 3 Alpha Kilo, descend, follow the 1 2 0. 3 Alpha Kilo, descend, follow the 1 2 0. 3 Alpha Kilo, descend, follow the 1 2 0. Amazing. Is that uh, 320 gone as well? I 
think he's descending. There's the 340 descending. Just dropped out of there. Line of sight. There he's down there. I'm getting some icing. Or is that just the... Is that icing? No, not the clouds. I think they model. I think they model. Like the like the so, the so flight time was meant to be one hour twenty. Airborne now, now for uh, one hour forty. So uh, airborne for twenty five minutes. Coming down to three point one tons. Twenty six track miles to run. Runway two seven left on packet trade. Midland one Alpha Echo defense side level nine. Sorry. So flight level nine is zero. Midland one Alpha Echo. 1,000 feet per minute, and that's 10,000 feet. We'll do the post cruise checks now. So, fuel lights on. Pressurization's all good. Seatbelts on. Checks complete. We're getting into the AC40's turbid site. No, it's much lower than us. Cadet says, you know, I can send you some Captain 32330 opportunities. Uh, we all know you want to switch. Ah, oh, all good, all good. Trail fire cut fan sign level one. Boiling hot with the PC pumping out. GPU's about a thousand degrees. Like a free eight Victor, yeah, we had not much luck on that recently, we've been so busy everywhere we've gone. Yeah, I'm glad we took that extra extra fuel. That should be set to standard as well. Ah, oh, what FPS you go? I don't know, but uh, plus 40 surely. It's very smooth. Bit less out here. I don't have fly live up, which has an FPS counter on it. Wearing down the wipers, yeah. I don't think it was an icing. Right. Hopefully, we'll nine, break right? off the approach next. Yeah. In holding for he said, time uh, now. Right, right there, you're going to Heathrow. He's been uh, here for a while as well. That looks amazing. Data should really exist in the 2020s. Oh. Yeah, so I've getting improved performance, I think. Delta 5 to 10 minutes. Delta 5, 5 kilo. Turn right, heading 09, anyway. Oh, Alex, yes. The airline that shall not be named. <laughs> Thanks for understanding. Well, not to give anything away there, but. Uh, so it's 691, uh, so you, you just pretty quiet, I can't hear what you're saying. Defense level of the 100. Speedbird with a turn down mic. And a little bit step closer to Heathrow, look at that. Good at 5, 5 kilo, 25 miles to dodge down landing runway 27 left. Defense level of the 4 fares. So he's getting in next, nine, Nigel. Nine, 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 nine. Very, very nice. So guys, if you just tuned in, we're holding at Ockham. We've been here for about 20 minutes. We are close to coming on to the approach into Heathrow, runway 27 left. There's no Vatsum event going on here, but it's just incredibly busy. First weekend with the Phoenix A320 out. I think everyone is jumping into their sim. Doing a lot of speed bird, 320 Well, less than five, so no, five to ten Adam, you're on approach now. I'm glad it took eight tons holding. That's not much for the 340, to be fair. Spirit 3 Alpha Kilo Defense, not a blue. So there's traffic. Spirit 5 5 Kilo reporting call, send only to the rector 120 Decimal 4, bye bye. 120 Decimal 4, Spirit 5 Alpha Kilo, great job. Spirit 3 Alpha Kilo, leave Ockham heading 080 degrees, speed 220 now. Someone else leaving Ockham, hopefully the aircraft below us. Another one, I'll take a leave Ockham, heading 080 degrees, speed 220 now. 
Uh, heading 080 degrees, speed 220 knots, middle of one alpha echo. I think he said speed, alpha, speed bird first, didn't he? Speed 100, the Alpha Kilo, speed first, didn't he? I think he might have said speed bird. Right, heading 080, speed 220 knots, vectors for the approach. There we are. So, um, Midland one alpha, so we Midland 1 Alpha Echo, the Sand Fly Level 8, sorry. Sand Fly Level 8 zero, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. 8 zero. So, unlike the 737, am I right in thinking I don't need to update the FMC, you just stay on the heading and you don't route direct one, one, to any waypoint C, you just sort of leave it like this. Degrees, two, two, zero, so, downwind 8 zero. Ooh, maybe a little bit high actually, but I've only approaching a clear level. Looking good. I'm happy with my airbussing at the moment. Right, one, one, two, Microsoft Flight Sim still has this sort of like degrees, blowing degrees, wind noise. I wish they get rid of that. <laughs> Sounds like you're in a, uh, an old the rickety the shed. Zero, zero, strong uh, winds. Uh, heading, uh, one, two. heading 260 degrees. No, so you can't really tidy four, up the FMC, five, can you? Two, four, five. Uh, Liza, what are you? Right. V1 now says engage approach mode, correct? Activate approach phase. I don't have FS realistic on at the moment. Uh, sub stuff. It's just stock Microsoft Flight Sims. Always done that for me. Probably. Still A0, we've got to get vectored downwind here a little bit uh, longer. Let's see what happens. Mid on one alpha, could have sent to altitude 4000 feet, can H992 hectopascal. Said 4000 feet, can H992 hectopascals, middle of one alpha echo. 4,000 feet checked, pull, level change, set Q&H 992, passing 8,000, ah, oh, no, I've actually said standing again. Right, now 112, passing 7,300 for 4,000 feet, no flow, step out of it, set, level change. Yeah, arm, exit, approach, okay, thanks. But I'll keep it at 220 knots, correct, because it is my assigned speed. Ah, oh, just airbussing. I hope I don't get vectored straight into a 10 mile final here. Oh, I need to select localizer scales on, don't I? LS, LS. Where's my checklist? I'm all good, I'm all, all good. Oh yeah, set standby altimeter, thanks. Ah! Set. Oh, I'm level changing, even though it's in climb. Why are you not closed? <laughs> Still don't like that. Ah, what's the temperature? Maybe need a squidge of engine anti ice. Uh, yes, engine anti ice. It's just a button on, isn't it? On. With that one on fire, corporate call sign only to heat flow 120 decimal 4, bye bye. 120 decimal 4, call sign only, middle of 1 alpha, okay, thanks, ATC, sir, bye bye. This is 40 down to Bravo for the Ockham Hole to send. Heathrow Direct, uh, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, Heathrow, hello, speed 180. 180 knots, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. So, I'm going to go VS now, 1000 feet per minute, and I can push this... No, I need to bug the green dot and select S. And bug the S speed. It's the only way to control the speed, isn't it? Now I'm going to do a shallow descent, because I'm trying to do a CDA for Mr. Heathrow Director. Uh, do, do I need to, to bug 180 knots, do I need to go to flap 2? But is it like a really high speed, isn't it, 200 knots? Welcome. Oh, yeah, 180, sorry, I didn't bug 190 for some reason. Welcome aboard Bradley, I'm doing well. 
So, uh, can I Better bug below? Left heading 305 and establish open ILS at 27 left, descending right hand. Left 305 degrees on that heading, cleared ILS 27 left, one established descent on the glide, middle of one Africa. Okay. Ah, it's really slow to bug. Right, I'm going to take a natural flops. Yes, it's minimum flat one. Ah, but I go, oh, I get a natural flops then. Welcome. There we are. So that's an intercept heading. How far are we out? Eight, yeah, four, five. I don't want to be any lower than this. I'll just leave it. At, I'll just do a really shallow descent now. Uh, where Am I going to overshoot the localizer here? Ah, I don't like this picture on the ND. Ah, oh, my localizer. Ah, uh, lock. Yeah, I've, I've gone for it, but that, that's not my fault. That was late vector. Localizer, live localizer, capture runway heading. Oh, we don't need to set it. It's an Airbus. Right, uh, I tried to do a CDA, but it was hard. Run, your airbusing is pretty good, especially compared to me, as I don't understand a whole lot about the bus of the air. Glide slope capture next, but I don't know. I'm so far out, I don't get the glide slope. What I don't like is this. How do I tidy this up? It's still got the hold, and look at Occam, and. Uh, how do I get rid of all this? Tidy it up. Do I just put direct here? If I just put direct to. CF27 left. But it, it won't go out of lock, will it? Just want to make sure it doesn't spit out localizer if it does this. No, I don't want nav. Stay in lock. Stupid machine. Lock captured again. <laughs> but how do you update? Uh, yeah, stupid. I just wanted to update the FMC. That's what I do. Right, glide slope alive. Broach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on 27 left, aren't I? There we are. Cat, I think you have accidentally done it. Oh dear. The plane's flying me, yes. <laughs> tower. That's <laughs> tower frequency. Put that on standby. It's going to be busy. What's the ground? I need to pre arm the ground frequency as well. Oh, I managed almost a CDA. Oh, Perfect. Life state capture, missed approach attitude initially 2,000 feet. Set. Uh, 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 Middle of one hour for Echo, fully established, 27 left, 180 knots. Middle of one hour for Echo, thanks, speed, 160 till 4 DME. 160 till 4 DME, middle of one hour for Echo. So if I push that in, what speed's that now? That's too slow, so I need to pull it again and go 160. Right, I need to start airbussing more, uh, arm that. 160. I'm just, uh, the traffic quite close, so I want to just get some speed break out just to slow down straight to 160. Right. I think I'm doing alright. I'm ha happy with this. One. My concern is a potential missed approach. Traffic is only three and a half miles ahead. He wants 160 till four. Right, just wait for the thrust to start coming up before I start the speed brake. There we are, thrust coming up, speed brake stows, and then arm. Okay, 160. <coughs> do, do all Airbus pilots arm both autopilots? Or just leave it in single? Right. Distance is three and a half. Okay, that's fine. One hour for echo, one eight five zero five. One eight five zero five. Middle one hour for echo. Two thousand five hundred. Thanks, Airbus. Check. Uh, ground. Uh, frequency on standby. Two thousand five hundred. 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 Both. Oh, I'm not going to do an auto land. What's the fun in that? But I'm going to drop the gear now. Gear down. Push this in. Continue approach. Correction. The surface winds one four zero degrees eight knots. Runway two seven left. Better. 
GS Mini activated. I know he wanted 160 to 4. I don't want to slow down too early. Approach all 3 3 1 uh, on a turn now. I'm going to wait for you. Tag cross, yeah. Uh, flight three, recorder, three, thank one, you. Tower, hello, continue approach on 27 left. Number Mara 3, Mara the wind okay. 140 degrees. Mara 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 uh, continue approach number 3 4. Not your flops. Heathrow Tower, hello. It's Midland 1 Alpha Echo, ILS 27 left, 6 miles. Just got one more natch of flops to go. I'll call again at five miles. Oh, Look, twenty. One alpha echo, either it's out. Hello, continue approach number two seven left number two. The winds one four zero degrees eight knots. Continue approach, middle of one alpha echo one four zero eight. We've got a bit of a tailwind. I'm just going to wait till four miles for landing flop. This is the any build scenery. Look at the FPS I'm getting, even though I've got the, one of the most detailed sceneries in the sim. Right, landing flap, landing checklist, gear down, full flap, cabin ready, spoilers on, flaps full, all green, no blue. What you gonna do? <laughs> checklist complete. Just wait for landing clearance. Okay, he hasn't landed yet. Expect late landing clearance, great. See that one five nine around me two seven right clip, take off the wind oh, one four zero yes. degrees eight knots. I'm disconnecting autopilot. Ah, no, I've got dual. No, let me do it. Thanks. I'll I'll retard just before. I'm now following the uh, flight directors using this uh, wiggly thing um, until touchdown. There's no landing rate calculator. Ten knots. Three three two Luma expedite AK right. I'm glad I slowed down a bit earlier than instructed. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, expect late landing clearance, the wind's 140 degrees, 8 knots. Continue approach, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. Where is he? Come on, Lufthansa. I can't actually see anyone on the runway. Land. Right, I've got my hand on the thrust levers. Speed of 706, let's go push in 100 above. Checked. A little bit low. Service move, you need to keep my landing clearance. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, runway 27 left, clear to land. <laughs> right, 27 left, clear to land, Midland 1 Alpha Echo. It's like Barcelona! 706, Victor, contact London Control on 119, that's 4780. Check. 119787, Speed Race 706. Oh, I'll take that, speed breaks up. <laughs> <laughs> what a butter, reverse. That was good. 100 knots. Whoa. Eighty. I wish I had a landing calculator on that bad boy. Manual braking, sixty knots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heathrow. <laughs> and we'll take this exit for ATC. Oh, come on! Break, 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 break. There we go. <laughs> yes. Uh, Roger's a bit laggy. Contact ground one two one zero four seven zero five. Good evening. Oh, I can't. There's a bit. Three, two, one, one, two, left, I, don't, I don't even know where I vacated, but uh, we'll, we'll vacate here. <laughs> Midland 1 Alpha Echo, welcome to Heathrow. Left onto Alpha, hold short of Echo, contact ground 121, decimal 705. Uh, left Alpha, hold short of Echo, contact ground 118505. Uh, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, thanks, bye. Uh, confirm frequency 121, decimal 705. <laughs> Sorry, 121705, holding short of Echo, Midland 1 Alpha Echo, bye. Right, oh, I had the wrong frequency written, wrote down because I think I took a different airport. Right, uh, 121705. Yeah, the handling is a bit sort of like. I can't really describe it. It's a bit laggy with the rudder, but I think it's something I'm doing, or maybe I've not set up. It's very different than before, but it is better. But taxiing around. A uh, whole shot of echo then, so it's second left. So this is Fox Shot and Echo. Right, flaps up. Uh, middle of Alpha Echo. Hello, we're on Alpha, taxing whole short of Echo. Midland 1 Alpha Echo, taxi right onto Echo, right onto Golf, left onto Foxtrot, stand 340. So taxi, uh, Echo, uh, right onto Golf, left onto Foxtrot, stand 340, middle of 1 Alpha Echo. Left onto 332 Lima, vacate right, right onto Alpha. Left so onto right, Delta, right onto right Echo, onto Bravo. Just hold short of Bravo. 
but you can expect Stan to 218. Golf, and Stan was 340. I'm just sort of looking. Uh, left on to, uh, right on to Alpha, left on to Delta, right on to Bravo, expect. Uh, hold right, so we're going to, an uh, Echo. Stand, expect Stan 218. And then. Yeah. Right on Golf, left on Foxtrot. Okay, I know I'm going. I know I'm going. This is oh, this is hard. So just to show you where I'm going, right on Golf, left on Foxtrot, stand three four zero. There's three four zero left and right, but we're happy with that. Right. Oh, it's so busy here. That was great. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> right, it's the second right on golf. This is the Itty Builds Heathrow scenery. I'm getting re oh yes, re break. Yeah, the FPS has dropped slightly, but this is high quality. High quality airport, high quality scenery, and I'm getting, you know, it's, it's acceptable performance for me. What do you guys think then? That was really enjoyable. Um, great add on. Oh, I, have I put my speed? Ah, spoilers. Right, right on. There we are, that's away. Speed bird, Look, 4 my speed. Kilo, sorry, pushing the start of face the east. There's right on golf, then left on Foxtrot. I'll turn these lights off. Oops, it's quick on the start. There we are. And shuttle 331. Turn off. Right Delta, right Bravo, stand 581. Off. Right, uh, so three four zero right or three four zero left. Uh, let's have a look here. I need to send the strobes on. We'll just go three four zero left. Uh, or three four zero right. Three four zero right looks like for a mega. Stand. I'll just take this. Oh, there, oh, there is actual three four zero. So we'll go right here. Look. Oh, I'm understeering because I'm going. Oh, that's my fault. So we're going a bit too fast. Too many lights to move here. Shall I tango? Sorry, second. Right, APU's on its way. Do bear with me as I Airbus on to stand. There's stand three four zero. Oh look, have I got bird splats? Bird splats on my. Uh, Window. That's Total superb. Tango, right. Anything right, else I've forgotten? Well, I don't have any. Oh no! I forgot to GSX on. Oh, ah. What do you mean? I want GSX. I want you to. What do you mean? I need to stop engines. How do I choose my stand? Well, uh, isn't it GSX? Oh, well, I can't request the stand. Is that because I was too early pulling on to stand? I completely forgot about GSX. Oh. Right, yeah, weather radar needs to come off as well. well I'll just... I'll bring it to a stop there. <laughs> it's probably way too far. Oh. Right, parking brake is set. Uh, APU is available. We'll shut the engines down. Right, yeah, weather radar. Ah. Uh, off, off. Uh, many other things. Landing lights. Oh, base. Can you hear that? Oh, engine anti. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's try it now. Yeah, request deboarding. Oh, let's go with let's go with Swiss board. So I guess I was a bit too early. Oh, I'm going to break it now. Uh, what else do you need to turn off? Beacon. There we go. Oh, I think that was a, an okay-ish parking. For a 340. <laughs> well, what have these lights on for? There we go. Ah, oh, we did it. <laughs> no two blues, do one red. Right, what else? Those I could turn off. Excellent. The capacity board. Oh no, I press dismiss. Oh well. I think they're I think they're going off now, aren't they? GSX is doing the thing. Ooh, upside down. That was like, fantastic. That was probably the most immersive flight I've ever done. There they are, look. Excellent. I don't think this is one of the Uni builds model terminals. No, it's just default one. There we go then. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've 
caught, fix my Microsoft Flight Sim crashing issues because I can't stress my system more than Phoenix A320 on Vatsim with lots of traffic. And he's trying the performance is stellar. Really pleased I've got to follow that. Uh, mate, that was the most buttery Airbus A320 landing I've ever done as well. Uh, I wish I was doing two sectors, but I, I really do need to go. Plenty. I've overran this yeah. slightly. Thank you very much there, Captain Meow, for your £5 donation. Very kind of you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great hair bursting, <laughs> Captain. Now that you are proficient, do your hydraulics failure down. next? No problem, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I'm the one for all your failure issues uh, in the Airbus. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you for your... Um, Generosity. Right, fuel on board 25. Remember, we took an extra 1200 kilos. So, had we not taken that, we would have landed with 1.3 tons. <laughs> Just like we did last stream. So, yes, busy, busy uh, that sort of event requires minimum fuel. Right, then, guys, so GSX would be doing its disembarking. Um, I'm going to sort of uh, cancel GSX here, just go straight to the replay, uh, just because I've uh, overshot by about 30 minutes uh, this stream as well. So, I'll disconnect from Vatsim. Really enjoyable flight. What have I got to say about the Phoenix A320, which you don't already know, but it's not much really. It's a fantastic add-on. I don't fly the Airbus. Uh, listen to what the real Airbus pilots go. But what an immersive experience with GSX, uh, all the integration. And actually, now I've just logged off a of VATSIM, there's a noticeable increase in FPS here. So a lot of that FPS issue was... Well, I'd say FPS issue, but it decreased the frames was definitely VATSIM. It's running so much smoother now, I've just logged off. So it would have been all that model matching, 3D models for all those aircraft. I've just noticed, I've logged off, and it's silky smooth. And I'm in London Heathrow, any builds third-party scenery, with all the settings on high, and it's running so, so smoothly. I've got to keep the sim like this and not touch anything. <laughs> right then, bear with me as I just terminate GSX. Fantastic experience. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix, all the information's in the video description. You know where to find it. Amazing. Right. Encounter Daniel O. Crash. Uh, I don't know what that means. I think that was GSX because I've forced reset it. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm just going to load a panel state here for the replay. As uh, a panel state, we'll put ready, activate. I'll just spam the flaps to full. And we'll go from there. Uh, thanks for the live stream. You're most welcome, Donald Mosina. Uh, let's see the buttery landing. Uh, yes, look at you all seeing. I didn't get lost in Heathrow. I got it right. I got it right. But yeah, that was the smoothest 320 landing I've had. I can't believe it. Right then, let's uh, see if the replay works then. Uh, stop recording. Uh, cue the funky replay. I'll just make sure I've definitely logged off that sim. I have. And let's see how it was. Oh yes, it's been a musical stream. Uh, replay. Okie dokie, seems okay. Right, let's have a look at this landing then. That was one of the best 320 landings. Well, it was the best 320 landing I've ever done. Have a look at this. Low. A bit firm, maybe, but yeah, bang on the aim point. I get, oh, do I? Oh, yeah, I need to do the reverses manually, don't I? No, they're not deploying. I don't think all aircraft are completely compatible. And we vacated expeditiously to help ATC. We were just. Heathrow loves us. <laughs> It looked firm to me at the time, mate. Not gonna lie. Oh, Aaron, thanks for, thanks for really ruining my day. <laughs> now it was a bit wobbly on the on the nose wheel here. It was a bit of a lag. Maybe it's my setting on these players, but on the touchdown and land the roll, that was very nice. Right. Yeah, it didn't, didn't look as good as it did on, at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Maybe. Maybe. A, a, a bit further. <laughs> than we want it. Can't teach that. <laughs> right, guys, I really need to go because uh, I have a shot today and I've got dinner on the table. Right, uh, I'll pop it <laughs> into the window view. Firstly, thank you for bearing with me with my spluttery cough and cold I've got at the moment. So uh, I do apologise for that uh, and my croaky voice. But yeah, uh, thoroughly enjoyable stream. Uh, as I said, the Phoenix HU20 is available from Phoenix directly on their website. £50. This update, this huge update, V2, completely free. 
it's already improved what was already a very polished and fine product. So if you don't have it already, go head over to Phoenix to download it. Uh, it's a, it's a well, worthwhile investment and if you want the best 320 available, I think, in my honest opinion, not having flown this aircraft ever, it's the best one you can get. Um, to all the people that donated, thank you for your generosity. To all the members, thank you for your continued support. And to all the regular viewers and subscribers, thank you very much for popping in and interacting with me. It's been a very enjoyable uh, three hours or so. Uh, a good banter and laughs. I am at work now for the next few days. I am at work. I was at work today. But um, I won't be live again until next week. But uh, best way to, to see when I'm streaming next is to subscribe. Turn on the bell notifications so you're notified when I publish a live stream. Right, enjoy your weekend guys, and I'll see you all very soon.